five first time winners already in 2022. Their dreams have come true. Can another driver get his first ever career win? And could have come here at Pocono today. Let's take a look at today's starting grid brought to you by Brent Street. Up front, it's Joe Gibbs Racing. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch making up row one. And then it is Hendrick Motorsports in row two with Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. Chris Revelle last week's winner starting in 11th position. William Byron spun in practice, going to start from 18th. See Ross Chastain, a very fast car in practice. He's got to go to the back, two-time winner this year. Kevin Harvick looking for a win to get in the playoffs. A little further back, we see Cody Ware. Eric Jones had to go to the rear uh, with their issue. You mentioned drivers getting potentially their first wins. How about drivers that have won at Pocono but haven't won yet today up to this point in 2022. Martin Truex Jr., Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, Ryan Blaney, and Chris Buescher, also a winner here at Pocono. As a matter of fact, let's dial up the 17 and see if we can chat with Chris Buescher. Hey, Chris Buescher, it's Dale Jr. up in the booth. You got us? Yes, yeah, sir. I got you there. Hey, man brought a lot of speed here. We know you've won here before, but uh, tell, talk to us about the progress you're making as a team. Yeah, it's been a really enjoyable quite several months now. And been uh, been unloading with a lot more speed, qualifying good, making that, that last round. So find ourselves right inside the top five for a good start, good track position. It's been, uh, been cool to see. Just got to keep, uh, keep cleaning everything up and getting the finishes at the end of the day. And yeah, talk to us about this racetrack and some of the challenges you'll face today. Yeah, lots of speed. We're seeing uh, the middle groove. Definitely have a lot of grip through all these other races for our qualifying. So uh, I'd say we're going to be pushing to get up into that. Uh, lots of shifting every corner here now. And uh, I think that'll hopefully set up for some good passes down these long straightaways. And bump through the tunnel. See uh, what we can do to get across those. Keep car underneath you. Be able to set up for passing. All right, Chris. We appreciate you talking to us under the pace laps here. Good luck. I appreciate it. Thank you. Also want to thank him for the Ford Performance helmet cam that he is wearing. Uh, that should be a great vantage point that we'll be able to see Chris Busher attack this two and a half mile tricky triangle racetrack. For more stories before the green flag flies, let's go to Parker Kligerman. Well, Rick, there's an old saying in ra racing, winning fixes everything. That's about the only thing the 19 team and Martin Truex Jr. have not done. Look back at last week. They won the pole, won both stages, led the most laps, but didn't win the race. It was devastating, but I talked to Martin before this race, and he said, we changed everything on this car, and I'll know by lap three if it's also a winner, which could just fix everything for them, Kim. Well, Parker, Ryan Blaney admitted when they rolled off for practice yesterday morning, they were way off. They didn't have the speed they needed, the ride quality very poor, and they couldn't turn the car. They made significant adjustments in order for Ryan to qualify in the sixth position. Crew Chief Jonathan Hassler told me it's not perfect, but they were happy with the adjustments they made to get the car where it is right now. Marty, they are still looking for their first points win of the season. Kim Denny Hamlin trying for his seventh Pocono win. They qualified on the pole for this race, but they do not have the number one pit stall. Well, why is that? Well, it goes back to Saturday morning when inspection happened. It's actually Friday afternoon when inspection happened. They failed inspection twice, lost their car chief. They also lost their pit selection. So they're in pit stall number nine today. So despite winning the poll, there'll be a lot more traffic on pit road for Denny Hamlin. Chris Busher right behind him as he gets his pit road speed right now. So we'll see if that affects their race this afternoon, Rick. Yeah, Marty, uh, the field running down pit road, checking their pit road speed. As they follow the pace car down there right before the pace laps. Verizon Frontline is the advanced network for first responders. Today, Verizon is honoring the members of the Pennsylvania State Police, the Pocono Mountain Regional Police, Pocono Raceway Fire Rescue, Penn Forest Fire Company, the Lehigh Valley Health Network, and Pocono Mountain Regional EMS. Please join Verizon in thanking first responders for all they do for us every day. All right, drivers, take us around this racetrack. Yeah, this thing's pretty different. All three corners different at Pocono. Going down into turn one, 14 degrees of banking. It's a really tight radius, 150 degrees. Some guys say these two turns, but 
uh, cause it one turn, then you go down that long back straightaway over 3,000 feet into a scary tunnel turn, the most treacherous corner, I think, on the series. Eight degrees of banking, really, really fast through there, Jeff. Yeah, it's important to get off of that because you've got this straightaway, the North Straight, 1,780 feet. That's a short one, and that's a long one, and it leads to turn three. Turn three is only six degrees of banking, and it is so important. It's so difficult. That's where we've seen all the trouble this week. And then it leads to the second longest straight in the entire Cup Series. And so if you don't get turn three right, you are going to be getting passed, and you will not be able to pass. So that is such an important corner. And remember, Ty Gibbs, the 19-year-old making his Cup debut, subbing for Kurt Busch. Listen to the radio. Coming to the actual start of the race, we're going to lay back like several seconds so he can get to run a few laps in clean air just to get to know what these cars feel like with, without being in traffic. And then we'll catch up as we get there. <laughs> so that's... That's great information because, uh, you know, zero laps on a racetrack in the next-gen car. Zero laps with this low-profile tire. Zero laps with this quicker steering box. This will be great. I was hoping that they would take this guy pretty easy, do some very, very conservative things. I think it's incredibly smart. Such a large racetrack, it's not going to go a lap down. You're going to be able to protect yourself, get to the first caution or pit stop to be able to make some adjustments. Coca-Cola pace cam on the back of the pace car, and it has made its way onto pit road. The field in the hands of Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch under green in Pocono. On the exit of three, I'm sorry, the exit of one. Kissing the wall, coming out of the first turn, and now he's starting to fall back. Chase Elliott moves up. Let's go back and look at Denny Hamlin. First corner, just way up the racetrack, into the wall. Don't know if that's damaged his car or not. Marty. Boy, he had the same exact thing happen in practice, too, Jeff. They were able to fix that car then, and you, the radio transmission you just heard from Denny Hamlin was, I'm sorry I killed the car. Chris Gabart saying, hey, a long way to go. Just settle down. Let's feel it out before you say that. We saw a lot of guys make slight contact with the wall in practice, but this is really the first time you mentioned it at the top of the show, Jeff. They've been on the racetrack in close proximity to each other. Cars are very edgy by themselves and in this, you know, tighter packs, dirty air, way less downforce on the car, way less grip in the tire. How does he rebound after tagging the wall in turn one? We'll see how the progress goes for the 11. It's Kyle Busch, though, that's out to a second lead already over Chase Elliott. Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney. Hamlin has fallen back to that fifth spot. Christopher Bell trying to get to the inside. Of Chase Briscoe there. Danny seems to be rebounding pretty good. Look at the inside of the 12 car, Ryan Blaney down into turn one. Blaney up in the grip. A little resin on the racetrack, provide a little extra grip in that middle groove. Denny still trying to side draft a little bit. Seems to bother the 12 car aerodynamically off the corner, down the straightaway. Blaney's going to give him the spot. Clears him and back up to fourth for Hamlin. Smart move by Blaney to just give that spot up rather than going side by side through this tunnel turn. That could have given Chris Busher a chance to make a run on him. Get to ride with Chris Busher with a four performance cam. I love Check out on the left side yeah. of his dashboard. That's the, that is the digital mirror. That is. A camera on top of the car, right on the roof. He's able to use that. It's much better view peripherally. The other camera is up top. You can just see to your left and see to your right better. A lot of drivers as the year has progressed have started to use this much, much more. You see it right there. Thank you, Steve. And I love that, man. That's our first real good look at this digital camera. A lot of guys mount that it's kind of to the right in the shade. You can't really see it that well. Some guys don't run it at all, but you still have the standard mirror up top in the center of the car. He's trying to chase down Ryan Blaney into the tunnel turn. Watch the bumps through here. The drivers are going over them. Very uncomfortable. 
They get worse every year with these winters, harsh winters. This track gets worse and worse through there. But Junior, John? hey Junior, real quick, one thing I see, me and you, we agree on this. So how about up here? How about his little plate card of all his calls? Oh yeah, I hate that thing. All those fancy <laughs> calls and when you're gonna pit, not pit, two tires versus four tires. That's his cheat sheet up there. Yeah, we need to figure out what that says. You look at that digital dash, and you see the car behind him, Daniel Suarez closing in, peeking a little bit to the left side. Couldn't really see that before, Jeff. Look how far low he can see Daniel Suarez below him on the corner. He knows Daniel's in the lower groove. You get spotter information to tell you where to go to take this air away from these guys, but you, with this digital camera, you can do that so much easier on your own. The advantage of that camera is you see that shot of the car behind him, he would have had to be looking in the rearview mirror up in top of the car and then to see him to the left, go look at the mirror on this A post. There's a round mirror right there. He would have to look at that mirror. With the digital, he could just look directly at that one, one uh, picture and see the entire thing of what's going on behind him. Marty. Hey, Rick, so what's the handling update on the 11 car? Chris Gabart chimes in on the radio, listen. I'm happy with what I see on the steering wheel angle. I think we're okay there. Well, there you go. They feel good about where they are. Dell Jr., you and I yesterday were talking about the wind here at Pocono. It's been pretty significant all weekend long, but it's picked up even more today and blowing towards turn one. you got to wonder if the, maybe that had an effect on that first lap and caught Denny off guard. Yeah, so the wind is blowing right into the left driver door of the car on corner exit of turn two, and that will shove the car up the racetrack. It'll have the opposite effect on the other end of the racetrack. I, the wind was really bad yesterday, equally as bad today. I think it played quite a role in some of the issues that these guys have had and some of the things we saw in the Xfinity race. Really gusty out there. Hasn't seemed to affect the driver of the 18. Kyle Busch has pulled away to a 2.7 second lead over Chase Elliott, only seven laps into this race. Oh, oh and a round goes two to car. two. Yeah. Austin Sindrick. Can he keep it off the wall? Tags the inside wall. That's on the front stretch, and the caution comes out. Down. Looks like he's going to try. I don't know what he's going to do now, guys, with these flat tires, how he's going to get this car. He can't drive this car all the way around the racetrack on a rim, I don't think. But look at this two car. We saw him up the racetrack in the tunnel on the first lap. And think about how this car has started the last several races at Atlanta and so forth. Big trouble with the handle of this race car at all the starts of these events. And I'll watch him turn three again. Yeah, it just comes around on him. Very familiar pitcher. We've seen that multiple times this week. Basically all by himself and just around it goes. Yeah, the last couple of races, Atlanta, New Hampshire, this two car has absolutely struggled off the truck or at the green flag. More troubles today. First cautions come out, lap six complete on lap seven for Austin Cendrick as he goes around, coming out of turn three. First caution of the day at Pocono. Ryan, off the bat, what do you think? I mean, right away, we've been seeing a lot of cars on edge. You know, you saw Denny Hamlin get into the wall, lap one, turn one. Austin Sindrick, you know, that wasn't the only issue he had. He also got really high in the tunnel turn, about hit the wall over there, and then it all culminated to what we saw in turn three. A lot of these guys are probably starting off a little lower, tire pressure-wise, anticipating, you know, obviously going the distance in this stage, trying to get those tire pressures built up, and obviously focusing on handling later in a run. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you kind of go a little too far that direction. And I feel like that was probably an example of it right there. So this track is really an anticipation game. And as much as it is all of the challenges that it presents, we talked about earlier. And you said it's, it's kind of a crew chief's game here and setting up the race car and understanding what you need to have for your strengths and weaknesses as a driver. Well, absolutely. And you also got to think, too, this is the first time that all, I think, 36, 37 cars have been on track at once. So, you know, there's a whole new factor of aerodynamics. What's the car going to handle like in traffic? And obviously the two car, they're struggling right now. You know, they mentioned it in the broadcast, you know, th they've had a tough go of it the last few weeks. And now with the crew chief suspended, you know, they're having to adapt to what the driver wants, what the car needs. And, you know, obviously just a little bit too edgy to start. 
Yeah, this is definitely a racetrack. I would have to imagine where that two team is feeling the absence of regular crew chief uh, Jeremy Bullens. And then you mentioned, you know, suspensions. Well, we saw yesterday the 42 and the 43, both petty GMS cars suspensions for their crew chiefs uh, during a pre race inspection issue. This is not a place that you want to lose that critical piece of the team. No, I mean, we talked about handling how important that is, and I think that's just going to be a continuing development as this race goes on. Absolutely. So keep an eye on those teams because you know they're missing their leader on top of the box. Let's send it back to Pocono as the caution is out early. One of the skydivers during today's pre-race ceremonies was holding a banner for The Gray Man, which is a new global spy thriller that takes action to new heights, starring Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans, The Gray Man, on Netflix this week. So we saw the spin from Austin Cedric. The spin itself, uh, you know, pretty painless to the car and any sort of damage. But with all these flat tires, instead of driving it back, Austin decided to get brought back by the tow truck but look at this right here and listen I can assure you that car might look perfect on the outside guys but there's no way that underbody is going to be optimal for the rest of the day this is going to hurt the two but it's been turn three all weekend long guys we talked to Christopher Bell at the start of the show and he said yeah the tunnel was what everybody's worried about but everybody's been loose off of three and usually with the old car we fall tight through the center really didn't worry about spinning out off of this corner they say these cars are a handful for some reason exiting three Jeff yeah what's difficult is you if you're loose if you're not loose in three then you're way too tight everywhere else and so you know two car right here that's Lacy. like he's way out of the corner and he had no idea that car was getting ready to come around on him it's boom it's around and he's holding on right now and that's the biggest thing, Junior, is not these cars come around so quick. It's not really talking to the driver and saying, hey, I'm loose, I'm loose, I'm loose. They just got the wheel turned, and all of a sudden they're pointed the wrong way. And Jeff, you and I are having an interesting conversation, right? When does NASCAR help you back, and when do they take you to the garage? The two of Cindric drove the car to the exit of pit road, so NASCAR must have felt that was you know, good enough to assist him all the way back to the pit box. I question, though, if, say, he would have been in the tunnel turn, Jeff, would they have brought him back to the pit box or would have been day over? I think we're still trying to figure that out. Like, what is acceptable assistance and what isn't? And Steve, the other question, how much damage was done to the back of that car, the diffuser there that comes out the back? We'll find out. Restart coming up next. Caution at Pocono. Ryan, we're going to see our first restart here, besides obviously the initial race start. Yesterday, the outside seemed to be the preferred yep. line. Give me some insight. What are we looking at? I mean, I definitely feel like the outside is going to be the preferred line once we get through turn one and stuff like that. I mean, you see it on track, you know, early in this run, a lot of, a lot of cars moving up into the resin. Uh, trying to keep that momentum on that high side. Uh, one key thing that I noticed on that two car though, just to mention, uh, obviously left rear toe link looks like it took a little bit of damage in that hit. Uh, that's been a factor a lot this year. And I think, you know, with how narrow these exits end up getting, especially out of turn number one on these restarts, uh, a lot of cars are gonna be right up on each other, trying to make as much moves as possible. We saw early three and four wide moves going down that short stretch. It's gonna be interesting to see how these cars react uh, once they start getting into those uh, tight predicaments. So where on the racetrack then, because you're, you're not wrong, we saw the trucks trying to go four wide yesterday. Where on the racetrack is that doable? Where are we going to see drivers try to push that limit? I think you're going to see it really out of one going into that tunnel turn. The tunnel turn is where you fake people out. It's like, are you going to let me in? Or are we going to have to, you know, am I going to have to force it? Am I going to have to let myself in? Fight yeah, for it a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and as we said, there's a lot on the line today. A lot of different strategies and a lot of different agendas for drivers and teams here at Pocono. We'll talk more about some of the implications that come as the regular season is quickly ticking down. But for now, let's send it back to Pocono Raceway because the caution is out. But we're getting ready to take green here in just a bit.
NASCAR Drive. That's your live race day companion. Get access to high definition in car cameras, current position tracker, and hit a pit stop data. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive, or you can download the NASCAR mobile app today. What a great shot right there, looking at all the campers in the infield here at Pocono. So, Rick, we, we saw the spin, and we thought it was pretty harmless, but I think there's a little contact on that inside wall. You see the two askew down the back stretch. The crab walk tells me they've broken a tow length. They're now back onto pit road. So let's take a look at our Toyota virtual car and talk about the tow length, what it is. This mythical thing in the suspension that now they have about four and a half minutes to change. So as we go inside the Toyota car, they're on the DVP. They've used a minute and a half of their time. They have four and a half minutes to make this adjustment. So right here, let's look on the right-hand side. We're going to take the tire off. Remember, independent rear suspension. This yellow component right here, we highlighted it yellow so you could see it. That holds the right rear or left rear tire, depending on the, time, the side, pointed in the correct direction. They're going to come in, remove those two bolts, hopefully not drop them, not drop the slugs. Remember, everything underneath here is hot now. It's dark and dusty inside these fender wells. They're going to put a new tow link in, put the two bolts in. They probably could even use quick pins if it's a uh, situation during the race. We'll see what NASCAR would have to say about that. But after you secure that, car leaves pit lane, and that right or left rear tire should be fixed. I believe it's the left rear tire on the two of Cindric, seeing them on pit road right underneath there making the adjustment. And I mentioned the DVP real quick. If you're on the DVP, that's damage vehicle policy. That means you're in the wreck. You have six minutes total on pit road. They were on pit road once, changing tires. That was about a minute and a half. They gave them four and a half more minutes to make this repair. You see the official on hand. And the crew chief and engineer on top of the pit box can log into a, a like a web portal, and they have the live clock. They see what NASCAR is looking at up in the tower. They know how much of that six minutes you have right there. And there you go. Crew chief, he's got a stopwatch in hand too. He's leaving nothing to. Steve, on that though, on that point though, they have to leave pit road. Is that when the clock stops? It's correct. Start of pit road to end of pit road. So you got to leave. Oh, they're almost to the exit, so they won't use too much time there. Let's get a few updates. We'll start with the four. And Kevin. Kevin Harvick does not have what he needs out of that race card. Way too loose, specifically turn three. He called a disaster. He said he was absolutely sideways. They did take advantage of this caution, changed four tires, half around in the right rear for Kevin Harvick, who is one of those drivers still looking for his first win of the season, Marty. So, Kim, basically seven or 12 cars pitted right there, including Joey Logano, who pitted from the 15th position. Steve, I don't know if you agree, but I like this call. Kind of got to differentiate yourself from everybody else, right? Logano said no grip anywhere. Paul Wolf making the call to bring him down pit road, put on some fresh Goodyear tires, see what happens with 19 to go in the stage. Well, so he pitted from 15th, but he's going to restart. I mean, he gave up seven or eight, 10 spots. You don't want to give up any track position, but if you don't really have great track position and you don't think your car is good, you know, make some adjustments. I don't hate it if uh, Paul Wolf feels like he had some adjustments to make, Parker. That's exactly what Rudy Fugel elected to do with William Byron, the 24. Remember, they start at the back for unapproved adjustments after that spin in practice yesterday, and they came down to make some changes just too tight in that number 24 car back in traffic. Felt like he could pass most of these cars here in the mid-20s pretty easily once they get it loosened up a little bit. And also another update, the 45 of Ty Gibbs didn't come to pit road. He was chatting with crew chief uh, just for a moment as to what he can do to run a little better. He said, just keep getting a good feel for that car, and we'll progress as we go. The field approaching the Geico restart zone. Back underway, Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson on that outside line with Chase Elliott on the inside. Look at them fan out as they go into one. Way up the racetrack, the leader, Kyle Busch, the 18. Losing several spots, three wide for the lead. Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson. Remember, Denny Hamlin did that. Got way up the racetrack at the very start of the race. Three wide into the tunnel. How's this going to play out as Kyle Larson comes back down to the yellow line or close to it? He's got the lead. They stay side by side for second. You don't often see the man on the outside, the one carrying it off in there to take the lead in a three wide situation into the tunnel. just off that right rear quarter panel of the 11 as they come down this really long straightaway. And now Elliott trying to surge ahead of the 11 of Hamlin. Hamlin trying to side draft. He tucks in behind though as they get close to turn one. There's a little bit of side draft there. And he's able to stay just on that quarter panel down into turn one, Rick. The 12 car Blaney hovering right there behind them. 
now single file. But what happened to the 18 of Kyle Busch? Take a look. Leading the race, entering turn one, way up the racetrack. Yeah, he just went in there. was expecting a certain amount of grip that just wasn't there for him. Didn't look like he overdrove the entry compared to the speed the guys behind him, but his car just did not stick. And I asked myself, guys, you know, that was restarting on hot tires. We had heard from Parker Kligerman, who drove this car at St. Louis, just how tough it was to keep his front tires clean. So maybe just junk of the front tires forced him up the racetrack. It's hard to say. Ross Chastain trying to work his way up through the pack, trying to get around Ricky Stenhouse in the 47 Kroger Chevrolet. Parker. And Steve, that's what it made me look to me as well. For the 18, there's just too much stuff on his tires. You look at Ross Chastain working his way to the field. Remember, had a really fast car in practice yesterday. Also, was one of those cars that spun off turn three. They elected to fix that car until he started the back. But when I asked him today, do you think you have the speed and the ability to pass, he just looked at me and smiled and said confidently, absolutely, this thing is a ton of speed. And I think we're seeing it right now. Ross Chastain driving through this field and being able to pass where a lot of cars are not really Really good to turn three when you watch him there and coming on the radio and said he's very happy with the car turned three. Interesting to watch the eight car of Tyler Reddick. Had an opportunity to go the inside of Ross, decided to push him down the short chute. They ran right up on the back of the 47 of Stenhouse into the tunnel. They continue that battle to turn three. Riding on board the Hunt Brothers Pizza camera on the roof of Kevin Harvick's car exiting turn three. Noah Braxton right there in the 16 car in front of him. Harvick's in 24th right now. Noah won the Xfinity race yesterday with a thrilling battle between he and Ty Gibbs. Running 23rd and 24th between these two. You see what Harvick was trying to do right there. He's trying to jump to the outside of Noah. Noah went up there. Now he got a great run on corner exit. Remember Kevin Harvick pitted a little bit ago, has four tires. Noah did not pit. That is so frustrating. He gets to the inside of the 16 and somebody comes up by and pushes the 16 just past him. His own teammate in the 10 car, Eric Almarola, decides to help the 16 maintain the position. Harvick battles back on the inside down into three. Back to the throttle. Can't commit full throttle. Now he's almost to the inside of the 14. Chase Briscoe down the front straightaway. Ducks in to catch a little draft, a little toe down into turn one. Great shots from the goldfish cam. Love this low shot. Noah went to the top. Hoping to get a good run on corner exit. The 14 car having some issues in front of him. Not handling very well for Chase Briscoe right now. Does size again not to go to the inside. These guys are not comfortable running side by side in that tunnel turn. They don't even attempt to try to get side by side before they enter that corner. I know they lose so much time trying to work side by side through there. This car must be very, very treacherous, really out of the racetrack. You heard Noah downshift as he got into the tunnel turn, then now in through turn three, this long sweeping turn. Parker. As we ride on board with Noah Greg Senior, as you guys said, he won the Xfinity race yesterday. So I asked him, how does he feel in the cup car? He said, you know, of all my starts, this is the most comfortable I've been in this cup car yet. So I said, all right, what's the goal? You won yesterday. What's the goal today? He said, to be honest, I just want to run all the laps in this cup car and learn. That's something that's been tough for me here in the cup series. And I feel so comfortable. With it. I feel like if I do that, I can get a great finish. So far, so good for Noah. Well, Junior, I think that report goes with what you were seeing, right? He had a run on the 14, didn't take it a couple times. So I love when the driver has the talking points, but then when they follow it up with the action on the racetrack, it makes me smile. Kim. Well, you guys talked about that tunnel turn. That's the one area that's been giving Kyle Larson a problem. He said, you know, we're good and one and three. The tunnel turn just a little bit tight. Haven't got a great read on the car, he told his team under caution. But before that restart, he did say, I have a feeling this car is going to be really good in clean air. We're seeing that now from Kyle Larson. He also told me this morning this track fits his driving style. P1, Marty. Kim, so what do you do when you have three wins in the bank? Well, Chase Elliott told me, focus on the racetracks where we're not very good. A good example, last week, New Hampshire, one of their worst racetracks, had one of their best performances ever. And Alan Gustafson told me here at Pocono this weekend, maybe the best car we've had here in years. Riding in second right now behind his teammate, Kyle Larson. And he said a man a moment ago, too tight in the tunnel, and he lacks grip in turns one and three. Surprising, his best finish here, fourth. He's done it three times.
All right, well, stage one is well underway from Pocono, and now that we've seen a pretty decent amount of racing here, we're getting a grasp on what we're looking at. You were just telling me you've been really looking forward to this because of all of the unpredictability of the next-gen car. What are your thoughts so far on what you've seen? Well, the unpredictability has been seen very relevantly in this race so far. Kyle Busch obviously missing turn one, washing up into the groove, and we talked about getting dirt on your tires, you know, getting the all the all the mess up there, the marbles. Uh, Kyle Busch struggled, you know, for the first lap of that stage and has now lost a lot of track position. That's gonna be difficult for him to get back. Another thing that I was really looking forward to was seeing shifting how much of a factor that's going to be. We saw Kevin Harvick, he downshifts to fourth in turn one, shifts back up to fifth down that sh down the long pond. Then going into the tunnel turn, he downshifts to fourth and keeps it in fourth all the way to the exit of turn three to the front straightaway. So uh, it's very interesting to see where these teams are finding that speed in the gear ratio. Um, and it's just, I mean, that's just, it shows the uniqueness of this next gen car. We never had that before. You wouldn't see guys downshifting in the tunnel turn because of how fast it is. Well, and then not to mention, even at the beginning of the season, I have to believe drivers are getting more accustomed to it now, but there was an entire different change in, in the gear shift, in the shift yeah. box. Can you kind of describe what we were seeing from the sixth generation of race car to now the seventh generation? Yeah, obviously, uh, going from the uh, previous gen uh, NASCAR stock car to today, uh, all from the day, from the very beginning, it's always been an H pattern for four-speed gearbox, first, second, third, fourth. Now we're going to a sequ sequential gearbox. It's up, down. And that's basically going to be, that's basically showing where the change has been immensely. Uh, we saw actually early in the season, Denny Hamlin that's right. downshifted, mm -hmm. trying to shift up to third, when in reality he had to go back. So that's been a very big challenge for the drivers to adapt to, as well as the teams. So, you know, it's also been unique to see, like I mentioned, gear ratio. There's a fifth gear now instead of a fourth. Yeah, it's that muscle memory that it kind of can can mess with you a little bit. There's a lot more we'll break down with this next gen car, but let's send it back to Pocono Raceway for now. You're watching the M&M's Fan Appreciation 400 telecast presented by Brent Street here at Pocono Raceway. What a great crowd on hand here. Beautiful afternoon in the Pocono Mountains. Looking down on the campers in the infield here, our aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. And Kim, it looked as though the three just came to pit road. Was that a scheduled pit stop? We believe it was a strategy call. Going to check in with the team. We didn't hear any issues on the radio from Austin. He did tell me this morning, though, they are looking to make very aggressive moves in order to try and win one of these races before the playoffs. So perhaps that's what we're seeing here, a place like Pocono where you can play out strategies. Austin said it was tight in the center of the exit of turn three. They took four tires. That was lap 21 for Austin Dillon. On board the Bread Street onboard camera. So there's a couple things here to talk about, Rick. We talk a lot about strategy. And I think a lot of guys are going to pit before the end of stage one. But it's not Road America. This place is two and a half miles, but it's a 55 second lap. It takes about 40 seconds to 42 seconds to come down pit road, depending on your adjustments, what you're going to do. Some can even say 38. There's a window of time. I think Austin Dillon knew he wanted to pit before the end of the stage, but he had fallen all the way back to 18th. So it was really the gap to the leader. He couldn't run three or four more laps because then if Larson doesn't come to pit road, he can't. He'll go a lap down. That's smart. Crew chief on top of the pit box. We talk about being fluid. Crew chief on the three car said, you know what? This is as far back as we can fall without coming to pit road. So I'm going to pit right now. Service done. Back on the racetrack in front of leader Kyle Larson, the three still on the lead lap. Crew chief Justin Alexander making that call for Austin Dillon. Kim. And Ryan Blaney running there in that number 12 car. We talked during our pre-race coverage about just how many changes they made during practice. It was not where he needed it. Well, despite the changes they made, they are still having trouble. He said he's tight on initial throttle, free all the way through turn three. One thing they noted to me, too, they did not feel like they had the speed that the Gibbs cars did. That's where the targets were for Blaney and this team. Marty? Kim, a lot of talk in the NASCAR world as Kyle Busch tries to get back by Ryan Blaney after losing those spots earlier. He hadn't said a word, by the way, about what happened in turn one. A lot of talk in the NASCAR world about Kyle Busch still being a free agent for 2023. And I love what he told Parker Kligerman earlier today. He said, I don't lie to you. It is definitely a distraction during the week. But when I get in the car and put that helmet on, as Richard Petty used to say, I flip a switch. And for me, it's all about doing the best I can to win a race. That's what he said earlier this week, too. Best thing for me right now, go out and win, show I can do it. When I'm behind the wheel, that's my only focus, Parker. 
Right, Marty, and as you watch him go down into turn two here, the car he just passed for fifth place, that 99 Daniel Suarez. Look at the line that Kyle Busch uses. That high lane, the team for Daniel Suarez has been telling him about that. That's how he was able to get the run on Daniel and take fifth place. Daniel's just been fighting a tight condition in that 99 car right now, unable to run that high line like the team's been instructing, and now he's watching Kyle do. He wants to get there, just can't get the car to turn. You see him on that lower line in turn three. He's doing that just to avoid the air right now. They'll get those adjustments when they get to the stop. And we saw in that last caution, Joey Logano saw him come on pit road trying to put some tires on, trying to work himself through the field. It has not worked. Restarted 22nd, he is now running 24th. So no gain with two tires to Joey Logano. Logano hovering around the 24th position. Ty Gibbs is running 31st look at here. as we take a look. Through the middle. Daniel, Daniel Suarez, Suarez. Yeah. yeah. Taking advantage of that side by side with Blaney and the 18 of Kyle Busch. Busch leads the way. And now he was going to try that outside groove in the tunnel. Kyle basically takes it away from him. Daniel defends the 12 car into the turn three. So Kyle's made his way back up to fourth. He'll be chasing after the 11 of Denny Hamlin now. Long way to go. You see Danny to Daniel, uh, Danny at the bottom of the screen there. Five that seconds little, in that, front of him. Yeah, that little battle back there between these guys has, has put quite a distance between them. Let's see if it's 99 car. Daniel Suarez can keep pace with the 18 of Kyle Busch as they have cleared Blaney and they're driving away from the 12 car. Let's listen to 99 radio. Tell so the 18 to what the f man. He could have wrecked the ball of us right there. Yeah, man. I'm sure he's frustrated from the start. It's all good. Save it for later. That's pretty funny. Not happy with the 18 car. No, not happy at all. And as we come to three to go, I expect that it's going to be busy pit road. Maybe not for Larson or Elliott. Maybe they're going to run it out. Or they actually probably could pit the next time by because they'll close pit road. The question is, who else to, wants to come to pit road now and try to service their car? I don't expect the leaders. They're going to get points. But someone else. And here you go. By what you'd imagine, just outside the top 10, left-hand turn, they are going to be busy. So now the question is, not the day to make a mistake on pit road under green. A good strategy call can go bad if you lose a lap. Parker. I am leading those in was Bubba Wallace from the seventh position talking to his team booty and crew chief Booty Barker. He said, we will be aggressive to get track position for the 23 car if we have the speed. It'll be four tires and fuel for him. Oh, we got someone spun off of three. The 10 car spun around off from turn three. Caution out, and it is golden for the guys that came to pit road right here. Opportunity has opened for everybody on pit road, and unfortunately for the tenant, Eric Amarola, it was at his expense. And he's in the same situation that the two car was in with the flat tires down here. He's probably gonna have to pull down here, get another tow. Let's see the if right side tires on the yeah. 10. Let's Looks see if, yeah, let's see if they do something different because drug the bottom off of the two, two car, which is really ruined the arrow for the rest of the day. So he's gonna try to avoid that, I think, Steve, if he possibly can. Yeah, I think he's going to either take this turn. I don't know if NASCAR is going to be okay with traveling backwards. I, I guess you could ask so. permission, but I don't. Years past, this was a no-no. Have it backwards. Put it backwards. Okay. Put it backwards. Now he is early on pit, pit road. Right side tires. That, this far right side legal. tires. Like you can, as long as you're in your pit box, you can pit backwards. There's oh yeah, no yeah, yeah pitting back. As long as you're in your box. My question was entering pit road backwards, but I, I have to get NASCAR's two cents on that. Let's yeah, go back and see what happened here. He said on the radio real quick, "There's no way I can make it around the racetrack with this damage." There you go, another. Another driver just losing it off of turn four all by himself. Round the car comes. Flat spot of the tires. Steve, you mentioned it was golden for all those guys that pitted. This racetrack is so big, they were able to pit. They're in the lead lap. Anybody else will pit, so we'll restart behind them. Yeah, so, you know, they knew they were going to. That's two things. First, let's talk about Eric Amarola entering backwards. I have no problem with this. I thought he'd done it at a very safe speed. I don't think he took anyone's danger, so I have no issues with what the 10 did. I'll be quite honest, this is a, a, a kind of information rule that I'm not sure has ever been an issue because you have been normally have been able, able to drive these cars around the track, but yeah, to your point as a driver, you get frustrated if you damage your car driving around, right? Yeah, so, but, you know, just because it's closed, that's a normal penalty. I don't think it'll be anything else. I know, but we've had multiple cars spinning in the same position, having the same issue. NASCAR is absolutely going to have an issue with this. I just can't imagine them not saying, okay, look, we've had two, you know, we can't have cars driving down pit road the wrong way all day every time they get a flat. Yeah. And so we can't have cars spinning around on pit road to get back going the right way. I mean, that just doesn't look good at all. Um, I'll be, be I'll be surprised if they don't. 
I'd be making an argument and say, yeah, yeah, you're right. It was a commitment line violation. I agree. <laughs> I agree. That's what I broke. That's the rule I broke. Yeah. Look, I got it, why, man. And why Put me that... in cuffs. I'll go to the tail end of the longest line. That, My bad. That's that's right. That's the penalty, tail end of the longest line. That's I'm a, a plea bargain to the least taking. offense. I understand that. <laughs> but he was going to be penalized anyway because he came to pit road when it was closed. Yeah, so so it's, you it's, can't get multiple. Well, you're going to get multiple penalties, yeah. but you only have to serve one. The point is all this to avoid dragging off the undercarriage of the car. That is critical. Your day is done if you have the same damage that the two car occurred being drugged by the record back to his stall. So this is to avoid. I take any penalty. I take a lap penalty, two lap penalty. I don't care. As long as my arrow's good and I can drive my car the rest of the day, fine. But I just think NASCAR is going to take a stand, and, and I'll be surprised if they don't on driving backwards on pit road. Hot off the presses. Commitment line violation. Tower has spoken. That right there is a commitment line violation. That's the only penalty. I think that is the right call, in my opinion, because that's what the drivers are trying to do. Um, now, listen. If pit road was full of cars, they might be like, hey, now, wait a minute, you know. But like I said, pit road was empty. They, they made a very conscious effort, so it was good. So that was the 10 situation. But let's talk about the guys that kind of hit the scratch-off ticket right there. And it really starts, uh, in my mind, with last week's winner, Christopher Bell, and right behind him, Ross Chastain. Ross started at the back of the field today. He drove up to about 10th. Bell and Chastain came to pit road at lap 27. They knew that even if we ran green at lap 30, the caution would come out, and they would cycle hopefully to the front with everybody that comes to pit road. What makes us even better is now they didn't even have to run three hard laps on their tires. So now they pitted, and while they were on pit road, the caution came out. So they have brand new Goodyear tires. They're currently, you know, 26th and 20, or excuse me, 27th and 28th. You think that's going to be awful, but I believe the majority of everyone in front of them, and maybe a few randoms that stay out, but the majority of the field are going to pit. Did this force the hand of the five and the nine? So they couldn't play their own strategy, even if they wanted to come to pit road with uh, yeah. two laps to go? Yeah, Larson might not have been coming the next time by, or Chase because of the points. Um, but if they were going to be coming, they would have thought they had another lap to do it. But this caution kind of preempted their decision. Well, how hard do these top four, top five guys run for the stage point? Well, well they won't have stage to Stage is over, yeah. yeah. It ends right here. So the stage win is going to go to Kyle Larson. He'll get that playoff point. And the top 10, all the way down to Harvick, gets stage points. The Larson, Elliott, Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Suarez, top five, but it was the spin by the 10 that brought up the caution. Stage one is complete, and Kyle Larson is the stage one yep. winner, picking up those very crucial playoff points. The closer and closer we get, that stuff really matters. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the playoffs, I think it's like six, seven races away. Um, you know, it's going to be really important to pad your wallet. You know, make sure you have these playoff points in your back pocket so that once we start getting to elimination time for the rounds, you have those playoff points to use. Uh, you know, we talk about... Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, some of the guys who stayed out trying to, you know, gain that points cushion. That's going to be key because also one thing to think about, there's two spots left in the playoffs. And then after that, if we start having more winners, it's going to come down to who has more points. So that's going to be an interesting factor to watch as the season rolls on. So the caution threw a wrench in a few teams' plans there when it came to pit strategy, but we did mm -hmm. see a couple teams bring it in before the stage break. Describe to me as a team, when would we want to bring it in early? What, what's the game plan here for certain teams? Well, yeah, so the teams who pitted early, they're going to be the, on the benefactor side of that. So they're going to come out, they're going to lose that track position, knowing that they're going to get that track position back once the stage ends, because that's a guaranteed yellow, that's a guaranteed, you know, they're going to get that back. So those guys who just pitted, and you know, took that time under, you know, they got that yellow kind of to help them out. Now, once we get back to the stage two restart, now they're gonna be in front of all those guys who pitted. So yes, they're gonna have a little bit fresher tires, but by two, three laps maybe, I think these guys are gonna be playing the long run game. Well, we're definitely gonna see pit strategy play out today as we uh, continue this race here at Pocono. Let's send it back to the track. Top 10 finishing positions, getting stage points for stage one. You see two names on there that need them, Ryan Blaney, as well as Martin Trex Jr. Kim. 
And Kyle Larson winning that stage saying, I don't have enough grip. I have to wait on the front end to turn, meaning it's tight. Crew Chief Cliff Daniels said, we're going to leave it this front since you're in clean air. If it's doing that in traffic, we'll change it later. Marty? Kim, let's see if that loss of pit stall selection hurts Denny Hamlin here. He said they're going free in the entry of turn one, tight everywhere else. Meanwhile, Chase Elliott saying, too tight in the tunnel, lacks grip in one and three. And Kyle Busch just lost grip once he lost all that track position back in traffic. But Rick, for the eight that already pitted, how about a free gift of a lot of track position? It's going to change up the game. Definitely. And Larson coming on to pit road first, comes off of pit road first, but very close. All right, well, now that we've seen pit stops at Pocono for the Cup Series, there was a little discussion there for the 11 team about concerned with their pit stall selection. Can you tell me what's going on there? Yeah, so right off the bat there, you see how close that race off of pit road was, right? The, the 11 chest got edged out by the five team of Kyle Larson. So what that does right there is obviously that hurts them track position wise, but also you talk about that loss of pit stall selection with how good that pit stop was and to only lose by that much. That tells me that, they, that they're on it. They're going to be able to knock out some really good pit stops. But if they would have had that pit stall selection, we'd probably be saying a different story about the race off pit road. So what is ideal then at Pocono for a team when it comes to pit stalls? Well, obviously, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good one. No. I don't know uh, to say. But, you know, obviously, you know, having that in your back pocket, knowing where you want to be on pit road, that's going to help you get that track position. You know, like I mentioned, if that if the 11 team would have had the pit stall selection that they would have preferred, whether it be further up pit road or further down pit road, they would have been able to time it better, been able to execute better and get off pit road faster. Well, in a place like Pocono, pit road looks pretty chaotic. We yeah. saw some close calls yesterday in the Xfinity Series race. How would you describe the environment down there? Yeah, pit road is very crazy, especially at Pocono. You know, it's one of the faster pit roads. That's something that we don't really talk about. You know, pit road speed is a lot higher at pit Pocono, uh, minimum speed, I should say. So it's it's very interesting to see cars coming in, coming out of their box, coming in. You know, you have to time that right, and that's something that's going to be something to watch as this race develops and seeing you know, okay, this team may have had a really fast stop. This team who's a little further back in the pack, they're going to meet in the middle. Well, and that entry point to pit road is interesting because it's coming off turn three there where, like you said, is the most critical part of the racetrack when you want to enter that long straightaway or you have the opportunity to enter pit road. So it's kind of an interesting spot there. Yeah, you have to make sure you're on it with letting the folks behind you know. And by doing that, one of the big things is you put your hand out the window, you're waving frantically saying, hey, I'm coming in, I'm coming in, I'm coming in. Because the guys behind you, if there's somebody in line with you, they're gonna be the ones who's gonna wanna know, okay, I need to get around him. Well, stage two is about to get started. So let's send it back to Pocono Raceway as they get ready to take the green. Download America's loved free-to-play slots app. Visit goldfish-racing.com. Looking back at Noah Gregson getting ready for another restart. And Jeff Burton in the Toyota Camry car on track car yesterday talked a lot about restarts. Restarts are vital at Pocono. You got to be aggressive. You got to make something happen. You gain spots, you'll never give them back. And if you lose them, you and I not ever get them back. So watch what happens. I accelerate to the Geico restart zone. I now get to start finish line. I can pick a lane. All right, so look what happened when I picked this lane. Check this out. Look at all the room to the left of me and all the room to the right of me. I went to the middle of the racetrack trying to make an advance or block. And now I left all these options open for people to jump to my left or my right. That's why in Pocono, if you're not aggressive, they're going to be eating you up. We've seen it over and over. The cars fanning out as they go for each restart. Yeah, 60 feet wide, the front straightaway is, and it is a huge opportunity. You have to be aggressive. You'll see a lot of guys, Junior, lay back just a little bit, try to get some forward momentum to try to make a pass into turn one. It's all great five wide on the straight, but when you get to turn one, you need to have it sorted out. Yeah, and at the end of the race, for what might be the final restart, you really want to have that guy behind you committed to you to pushing you down into turn one and get you clear. Uh, and if he's not committed to, if he's not a teammate, somebody that you know might be trying to make a move, you got to be defensive. 
And um, so, yeah, it gets pretty busy and busy. Uh, as as we go through stage one, stage two, stage three, it's just going to get more and more tense on those three starts down into turn one. want to remind you, Ty Gibbs making his first ever Cup Series start, subbing for Kurt Busch and the 45. Listen to the radio. He's had two pit stops already. You have the uh, driver, like, update to where I can do different, get faster. Yeah, I think arcing a little bit more into two might help get pointed a little better if that tightness continues, especially as we tighten up. And then I think, uh, to me, it looked like you were just uncomfortable in three, just kind of loose, borderline loose the whole way through there, and afraid to commit back to gas, which is good. It's fine. Yeah, 10 more. And I've been watching his lap times and around lap 18, lap 20. He's running as fast as everybody that's from 20th on back. I mean, his lap times and pace has really improved. Run a 56, 58 at the start of the race, but now he's in the 56 flats. And that's fast enough to run just around 20 to 25. All right, so the field looks different. Let's talk about it. Harrison Burton, Joe Logano pitted at lap 10. They've now stayed out. They're going to be up front. Christopher Bell, uh, he was running eighth. He pitted at lap 27, got a little lucky. So he's now rotated to third. How about our man Larson? All the way back there in 11th, Chase Elliott. 15th. Those were the two that were controlling the field. They pitted after the stage. We'll see if it hurts them on this restart. Field going through the Geico restart zone. Harrison Burton first into the gas. On the outside, remember, the leader on the start of the race and the first restart all had troubles. Ooh, look at this. Oh, man, them restarts are intense. Four wide. Oh, man, everybody in the high line losing a lot of pace. Kyle Busch made a big move low, and he is still getting cars a little contact with the 48 car of Alex Bowman and Kyle Busch. What a run for Christopher Bell. Look at him on the inside now of the 21, trying to take the lead away from Harrison Burton. Yeah, that outside line works much better than it ever has with that traction compound now. You could used to never run on the outside of the tunnel. Now you can fight up there. Harrison, this is more than just the lead of the race. You know, on those old tires, clean air was a vital fact to try to stay up front. Unfortunately, he's going to lose it in the first lap. Hopefully, he'll get in line and try to you know, mitigate the damage, but losing those couple spots can be very costly. Yeah, Joey Logano back in that 22 car. He started on the inside. He's back there in fifth right now. He also stayed out. Field a little more respectable as they go through turn one, Marty. Well, oh, Chastain trying to make a move on Joey Logano there. Uh -oh. so let's talk. And the 77 goes around. Balicki bringing out the third caution of the day. It looks like hard contact there. Something or tire down. Yeah, it is big contact. He's mentioned tire down. Left sides both look like they have air in them on this side. We can't see the right. Window net down for Josh Balicki. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. there was a failure. Yeah. Like looks, right rear tire maybe looks down. That right rear tire, guys. Or something broke. You saw smoke yeah. come out of that right rear. Yeah, it was the tire looks good. It looks like there was a failure in the suspension back there or something. Yeah, it snapped around quickly. Spire has gone through a lot of cars here recently. Yeah, watch this. Watch the right rear. Watch the smoke come out of it. Right there, and around it goes. And this, that's a big hit. It is interesting. I mean, the tire looks like it has air in it. So yeah. it's like the smoke, like either the car dropped, like, you know, suspension broke and it, the body came down or something, a tow link, like something looks like it mechanically let go for Josh Balicki. Looked like he was nothing he could do. The only thing I have in the back of my mind was there was that also at the moment of the shift was that, you know, we saw that with the seven a week ago at New Hampshire. The 10 had some issues. Uh, we didn't hear that out of Josh Balicki, but in my mind, that's where the downshift would be. But I could, you know, hard to say from the outside. I saw Eric Amarola on pit road earlier with a problem. First car one lap down. He's going to get back in the lead lap.
Caution is out once again, this time for the 77 of Josh Balicki. That looked like a hard hit. Yes. And believe it or not, it, it's even harder than it looks. Yeah, you know, but that is a testament to the safety of these uh, next-gen race cars. Uh, just a tough hit, you know, especially uh, they said on the broadcast, you know, tough hit for that Spire team. Uh, I mean, that's the big thing about Poconos. There's no small hits here at this racetrack. Uh, we're talking a 2.5-mile super speedway uh, with basically nowhere to go sometimes. We saw it all weekend long. We saw it in the ARCA race with Amber Balkan. We saw it yesterday with uh, Jeb Burton uh, going upside down on the front straightaway. And we've already seen it here today with uh, Josh Balicki. Uh, just a tough, tough hit for him. You see lots and lots of damage on that race car. So um, hate that for them, but that's just the nature of the beast here at Pocono. Well, you mentioned Spire Motorsports, and we've heard drivers this weekend who have been victim of circumstance of some of these hard hits. They've mentioned that it's just tough for smaller teams and smaller operations to acquire so much damage like that. Yeah, because, you know, you got to think, you know, with, especially with the next-gen chassis, right? You're using these same center sections at a lot of racetracks. I mean, we saw with Ross Chastain, the car he won at Coda with, they took that same center section and raced at, at uh, Talladega, and he mm -hmm. won with that same car, which is so wild to me. <laughs> but... It, it's important, you know, especially, you know, keeping parts in shape, keeping, you know, chassis in one piece. So, um, it, and, that, and that goes all the way down to every series. That goes down to trucks, Xfinity, Arca, you know, even at your local level. So the, 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 the pain of being in those race cars goes far beyond just what happens at the racetrack. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, the 77 team is able to rebound and have a good race next week in Indy. Well, and damage to a race car aside, as you mentioned, a testament to that gen next generation race car and the safety precautions that are put into play to make sure the drivers are safe. So let's send it back to Pocono Raceway as we're under caution right now, but getting ready to take green here soon. It's the biggest party of the summer. Witness Brock Lesnar challenge Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam. It's streaming live from Nashville Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern only on Peacock. You look at the paint scheme on the 7 of, of uh, Corey LaJoy, and Corey LaJoy might be moonlighting in this area. Guys, I am so pumped up to have SummerSlam on my number seven Spire Motorsports Camaro this weekend at Pocono. But make sure you do not miss July 30th, SummerSlam, only on Peacock, because only one of these two guys is holding this here belt. Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar, who's it going to be? Listen to this crowd. The grandstands are shaking. The foundation is going to crumble. And I think he might be related to Roman. They look almost the same. Corey LaJoy again behind the wheel of the seven and showing those summer slam colors. Welcome back to Pocono telecast presented by Brestry Parker. Well, Rick, I just want to add on to that Corey LaJoy there with the summer slam on his race car. He uh, he brought that belt to driver intros. I think he was trying to intimidate the rest of the field. I didn't see a lot of drivers take him seriously. Some were actually trying to steal it from him. So I don't know if it works, but right now in 23rd place, he's been pretty happy with that race car. He was very optimistic going today that they could have a great day here with the strategies that come uh, come into play at Pocono. Well, unfortunately, the caution for, for Corley Joey's teammate, Josh Balicki in the Spire car. I question the shift. So as we go down there and look at his RPM, I see the jump of the downshift. It got down to like 7,000 back to 75. So it looks well past the downshift. From that data right there, I'm willing to say that I don't believe that was a shifting issue. Now, I still believe something mechanically happened to that car. It's obviously the smoke came first. Josh even said on the radio something happened, but I feel more comfortable that it's not a shifting issue, Marty. Hey, Steve, is there concern after the first stop of the day for Denny Hamlin and the race team? Listen on the radio. Hey, for sure, I got all the wheels tight, right? Everybody's telling me they're okay. No vibration, just wobbleness. Um, well, I mean, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but these wheels do 
did look worse. Uh, the body doesn't look as bad, but the wheels look worse than the one just day of practice. So the steering is straight. I can't speak to camber or anything else like that. Um, so I'll take it forward to first. Yeah. So Chris Gabehart making a reference to the contact with the wall they had yesterday and comparing it to the contact with the wall they had today. So see, that might indicate that Chris Gabehart may be a little more concerned. There might be more damage than they saw on the 11 car with the suspension. Okay, so when he's talking wheels, he doesn't mean whether they're tight or loose. I know we had that conversation about the 77. What he's saying is when a car hits the wall, the body hits it, the tires hit it, but also the aluminum wheel makes contact. And that's really what gets driven into the suspension. So when Chris says the wheels look worse, that means the aluminum part of the wheel. We've all done it and then denied we've done it. When you turn through the drive through and you hit the curb with your wheel and it mars up the aluminum wheel, imagine hitting a curb that's three foot tall called a wall at, you know, 150 miles an hour. You, it damages the wheel the same way. So you then trans, you know, transfers that load into the suspension. We saw the two's toe link, you know, the good news is you kind of know what the weak parts are, the bad news are, what are you going to do? Come down pit road and check them. Pretty hard to do when you're this far up in the pack, Kim. And Ty Gibbs making the substitution for Kurt Busch. I asked him before he climbed in the car, what can we expect from you today? You're an aggressive driver, and he said, no, no, no. He won't be as aggressive as they've seen him in the Xfinity Series because he doesn't know these cars. He has so much to learn, and that was the focus here today. Billy Scott, the crew chief, echoed that, saying the first two stages are for learning. The goal is an uneventful race. So big day for this young driver. Junior Jeff, what was it like when you jumped in the cup car for the first time? Well, when I got in the cup car, uh, they ran the same tire wheel, same steering box all those things were pretty much the same cars felt the same drove pretty similar this is nothing like that Jeff you know rack appearance rack opinion steering I know he's ran super late models and stuff like that before but this steering is super quick compared to yesterday's car yeah. and a low profile tire really tre tre uh, treacherous completely different tire but now you're also racing against a completely different type of driver too. these cup drivers man they, they're tough it's a whole another step up so great experience great opportunity to learn a tremendous amount today about ready for another restart here at Pocono. This time up front. On the outside, it's Christopher Bell. And again, fanning out. Three, four wide. Nine car chase Elliott up through the middle. Do they know he's there? Everybody kind of backs out a little bit. Now we're three wide, a few rows. It's always difficult on the cars on the bottom. They can't get through the gears. You see the momentum the top has. You Harrison. said what I was thinking. Do they know if he's there? <laughs> yeah, you hope they do. Harrison Burton with a great restart there. He's moved back up to second. Bubba Wallace to third. Kyle Busch there in fourth oh, we got and around. It looks like, yeah, the 11 of Denny Hamlin around through the tunnel turn. He had just went to the low side. Spin around there again. Made it three wide into the tunnel turn. I wonder what might have happened down in that corner. Saw him jump out of line on the short shoot. Bring him to us, Lambert, if we can. Bring him to us. Copy. So the tires look up. Go straight to pit road here. Straight to pit road. Let's take a look see here. So there he is. Gets a little help from behind or nope. A little bit low and just loses it. Gets on the apron a little bit. Dewedges the car. Got those bumps there as well that could have upset the car. He has a great shot of it. Look how low he is right here. Left side tired. Much less banking down there on that apron. And it's rough. You wonder if those two things collectively they all got jammed up right here. Well, and after that radio earlier, Bert, earlier and, and all that conversation about wheel damage, you know, that looks to me like just an accident. And I don't see anything wrong with the car other than you got too low on the apron. You guys agree? I mean, I didn't see any smoke, any tires pointing the wrong way before he started to spin out. I think that was just a, a wreck, not a mechanical issue. Back on pit road, the 11 of Denny Hamlin running up front.
41 laps complete at Pocono Raceway. The caution is out once again, this time for a single car spin, that 11 of Denny Hamlin. The tunnel turn bit him. What happened there? Well, I mean, obviously we, we saw on the broadcast right there, hit, hit the bumps, got a little low on that apron, spun out. And that's one of the big things that I was looking really, I was really interested about with this, with this new car heading to Pocono Raceway. It's a very bumpy racetrack, very flat racetrack. And the biggest thing with this new next gen race car, the lower profile tire, you know, we've gone from the 80, 18 inch tire, to the 15 inch, 15 inch tire. Um, and so obviously there's less sidewall. That means there's less squish in that tire. When I say squish, it's how much that tire deforms. If that tire isn't deforming, you're not going to be able to have that little bit of like skew to the car. That's one of the benefits that we have in the NASCAR Xfinity series still running on that old style wheel. So we still have that feel, that little bit of squish. The cup cars, that's been the biggest issue. I shouldn't say issue, but the biggest thing that a lot of these drivers have had to get used to is the feeling of you're either on the edge or you're spinning. And right there we saw Denny Hamlin was on, was got that, uh, got to that edge and, and went past it. Now, I know you don't drive this generation of race car, but can you describe from your knowledge how that feel progresses throughout the race? Yeah, that feel progresses. I mean, you, you talk about tire wear, obviously, like, like we mentioned. And as I mentioned earlier as well, you know, starting off on lower pressures, letting it build up. You know, a lot of these, and we've seen it a lot with this next gen car as well, teams, you know, kind of pushing the limit on tire pressures, trying to be a little low and trying to make sure they get the most out of their race car to start a run. But by the end of the run, the car's already, I mean, the, sorry, the, the tire has already deformed so much, has done so much moving and stuff that it ends up, it ends up failing. We've seen that at Atlanta, we've seen it at multiple different racetracks. So, um, but here it was just a simple product of uh, just edgy race cars. You just clipped that apron a little bit. Minimal damage though, thankfully, for that 11 car. Let's send it back to Pocono, taking the green here soon. Built Ford Proud. Download America's Love Free to Play Slots app. Visit goldfish-racing.com. And by Breastree. For more information, visit breastree.com. Fans all over the place here at Pocono. And fans, you can be a part of NASCAR America Motor Mouse on Monday and Wednesday, 6 o'clock. Call in 844 NASCAR NBC is the name. That's on Peacock. Also on Peacock on Thursdays, Dale Jr. Download. And I know the guest this week. You do know the guest? Yeah, Mike Joy just tweeted out that he's going to come on the show Tuesday. Spectacular. It'll be you, great. You learned that by Twitter? I read Twitter and found huh? that out. I'm actually wondering it's interesting. who is the bigger historian, you or Mike Joy? Mike. Without Mike question. is? Yeah, okay. No question. By a long shot. Hey, and if you, you know, I'm on Motor Mouse tomorrow, so if you're going to call in, I will. throw me something you want to talk. I'm not talking to you, Rick. I talk to you all the time. <laughs> if you call in, I'm not answering your phone call. What? But all the fans listening, join us on Motor Mouse because we're only 50, what, we're 43 laps in this entire race. We've already had some chaos, yeah. I, and I don't even think we have the top storyline yet. I'm sure there's more to come. And I know a guy who's very familiar with Motor Mouse is on there quite frequently, Kyle Petty. Right now, he's on the Peacock Pit Box. I'm going to tell you, man, this thing has been crazy so far. As we talked in pre-race, we see accidents coming out of turn three. We see these guys spin. Listen, guys driving the wrong way on pit road. We look at it right here. Uh, you see the two car of Austin Cindric just jumps out from under him. We heard Kevin Harvick talk about it. We saw it in practice. We see the same thing happen to the 10 of Eric Almarola, and we just saw the 11 car of Denny Hamlin spin across the tunnel. So it's been very, very eventful for some of our big drivers. From Josh Balicki here, forgot about that one. How can I forget that one? Been very eventful for some of our standard or our, our, our veteran drivers. But quietly, while all this chaos has gone on, Ty Gibbs has gone about getting it done out there in a quiet way and is learning and little by little is moving up through the pack. Steve, you mentioned it. Get through stage one, learn, 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 learn from the back. Then move forward as you feel comfortable. And that's what we're hearing also out of his crew chief. I, I believe that, so the crew chief's job is a lot of things, strategy, pit calls. But I think his number one job is to just be the general and set the overall tone and plan. And I think that Gibbs had this conversation. From all the radio we've heard, he's asking the right questions. So I love what they're doing. They're not panicking. I mean, there's 117 laps to go in this race. So I, I really like the approach so far out of the 45. Two by two once again. Christopher Bell on the outside. And 
Bubba Wallace on the inside of the 23 as they get the green flag and fan out once again. You see the 18, that M&M's number 18 of Kyle Busch. Can he get all the way up to second on this restart? Kyle Busch has been amazing on restarts today, showing a lot of aggression, willing to make the jump on there. Oh, we got a crash oh. seven of LaJoy's around on the back straightaway. The second Spire Motorsports car is now around. Looks like no contact. All four tires seem to be up. That's the big concern now, right? It's just the air in the tires to get back. Got spun out. Looks like we're rolling. 47. You said it a couple of times, Dale. You say, hey, does the guys know they're there? It's been two, three, four wide. And, you know, we talk about spotters going down into turn one. You're kind of going away from you. And it's a long ways to turn one. And then as you turn, you know, it looks easy on TV because you, you're pretty zoomed in. But when you're on the roof, I'm not sure what you can see down there. Yeah, at that point, it's all on the drivers to be able to be, you know, know where everyone is and who's on your corner. And Well, Kevin, Hard Kevin Harvick said it on countdown to green. I think there's going to be a lot of restarts because I think there's going to be a lot of spins, and we have seen it already, not even halfway through stage two, and this is the fifth caution. Well, there are going to be a lot of restarts. Everybody's going to start picking up on what Kyle Busch is doing. He looks like Ron Hornaday out there. Taking advantage of these guys. That's a great reference. A great reference over on board of this. Corey LaJoy, four wide. Goes down to three wide. Oh, got into, looks like McDowell maybe, and then the car behind him got into him. Yeah, I call that basically a stack up, right? Looks like it starts with the seven getting loose. Is that what happens? Uh, looks like the seven got into the to McDowell, and then behind him there was some contact. You talk about still driving the car. There was a moment that thing looked like it was going left in traffic. He got it back right and then didn't get in the wall. So this is some good dirt track and little contact. But then right here, the wheels get turned left. Watch that thing starts to go left, then it's back right. You can see him on and off the brakes, too. Oh, this would be a great view right here. Contact Clear there, and then Ricky behind him. Tight front, easy, easy. Go. You might a little, a little. Keep going. Harvick Clear saw going a hole inside. throttled up. There you go. This is a great shot. See contact there and then contact there. And then I think at that point, it seems like you're not trying to not wreck. You're trying to wreck as little as possible, right? Like not overcorrect, <laughs> tear the nose off. You know what I mean? Like at some point, you have to decide, OK, I have wrecked. So now instead of trying to save it, now it's like wall avoidance. You know, it's like. At what point like, did he say, OK, I have wrecked? Well, <laughs> it looked to me like at some point the brakes came on, and he was like, OK, That's hands probably, up. Yeah. This thing is wrecked. <laughs> I'm not driving it anymore to save it. I'm driving to save it from damage. I don't think anyone will come in. We've been under yeah. yellow for so long. This is a big step, though. All those guys trying to stretch fuel, get to a window, big help to them. Caution is out once again at Pocono as we see a few cars there elect to pit here under caution, which means we're going to see another restart. Restarts have progressing a little more chaotic yes. as we've seen them go. Why yeah. is that? I mean, like I said, that's another thing. That's the nature of the beast of Pocono, right? You have a lot of cars, you know, who took tires at the stage break and those cars who pitted early. So there's a little bit of a shuffle in the running order. So a lot of cars are trying to get that track position that they lost back. They want all that back because they know at the end of the race it's going to pay way more dividends. Another thing to mention too, we keep seeing these single car spins. We keep seeing caution after caution. The most cautions we've had at a Pocono race is 13. Do we see that get bested <laughs> today? Are we going to see more than 13? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it aside. I mean, this race has gone, you know, to prove be, it's gone to prove very difficult for these drivers. This is a total, this is a true test of what this next gen car is. You know, this is a, this is a two and a half mile super speedway, flat corners, high speed corners, and some slow ones. So there's a lot of variables going into today's race. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be too far out there to say we get 13 yellows. Well, we've seen five cautions already in only 46 laps. So honestly, again, we've already decided that math is not our strong suit in here, but we're on the right path that that is the case. 
But that being said, we've seen single car spins and very minimal damage. Yeah. Can you speak to the other drivers that aren't involved in that spin and having to react to minimize damage? Yeah, you know, the big thing there with this next gen car is it's very durable, right? It has the composite body and obviously a lot of teams have beefed up the suspension a little bit. We talked about the tow links on the rears of the cars. Obviously, Cindrix was a little bit of a harder hit, but these cars are able to take these hits. You saw Corey LaJoy's car. He took that spin, was able to nick the wall with his right rear. I think he's going to be fine. I don't think I have, I don't have any worries about him and his race car. And a few years ago, with that kind of hit, not even a few years ago, last year, mm -hmm. I mean, you'd be out of the race. Not out of the race, but you'd be out of contention. Corey, he's going to be able to just put new tires on him and be on with his day. Absolutely. That composite body is proving to be as strong as we were hoping it would be. And it makes for great racing because, like oh, you yeah. said, it gets those cars back out there on the track pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get you back to the racetrack pretty quickly as we send it back to Pocono. Set with access to NASCAR Scanner for only $2.99 per month. You can listen in on the pit strategy and spotter communication and crew chief calls. Log into the app to use on mobile devices. Visit NASCAR.com slash scanner. It's NASCAR Cup Series racing from Pocono. Telecast presented by Restree. And let's get a few updates before the green comes back out. We'll start with Kim. Christopher Bell running in that first position right now and after their win last weekend in New Hampshire their plans have dramatically changed according to crew chief Adam Stevens. He told me before the win they didn't have a clear direction. It was oh my gosh we need to win versus scoring points. Now they're not trying to cover multiple bases so their focus getting those playoff points. You do that by winning stages and winning races. Bell currently in the first position ahead of Bubba Wallace, Parker. And Kim for Bubba Wallace, who's in P2, but elected the outside here on this restart. I had a funny conversation with his spotter, Freddie Kraft, about that sight line down to turn one. He said, I was trying to explain it to Bubba a couple years ago. So he came up on the spotter stand and watched me spot another race. Bubba turned to me halfway to that race and said, you can't see anything down there. Since then, he knows it's on him down to turn one during these crazy restarts. So far, so good. Marty. Hey, Parker, for Brian Wilson and Harrison Burton, this strategy's worked out pretty well. They last pitted at lap 10. They have stayed out since then, and yes, they can connect it to the window at the end of stage two. They will have to stop one more time here in this stage. For your money, Junior's exactly right. Two restarts ago, Kyle Busch was in the sixth row. He restarts third. Keep an eye on that 18. He's been fun to watch on these restarts. And Marty, he's on the front row, so the top two. Bell and Wallace, they chose the outside line, and we'll see what Kyle Busch has for him on that inside line. Everybody up on their feet for this restart. I'm holding my breath. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Every restart's went crazy. We know it's going to be three, four, five wide. Most of the fanning's been back here around the row, you know, row five or six. So far, everybody in the Second, third rows, pretty committed to the lead, guys. Kyle Busch takes the lead. Ross Chastain pushed Kyle Busch down the front straightaway. I think late in the race, he might do something a little different. But right now, everybody's staying pretty orderly. A little contact there between the five and the one almost down the back straightaway. Kyle Larson on the outside here. Oh, they go through there so tight. Really close together right there in that great battle. Looks like the 99 way down the racetrack. Coming out of the tunnel, Suarez. Oh, up the racetrack, the one Chastain in the, the door of Larson. Larson can't be happy about that. That'll slow them both down. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. William Byron trying to get to the back bumper of Larson. Give him a push. Larson, as they go into one, can he clear? Yes, he definitely clears Chastain. Truex down to the bottom there in the yellow car. William Byron right there behind his teammate in the gray car, number 24 on the outside. Chastain loses several spots through that exchange. Truex was the gainer. Big, big shove from the 48. Chastain. Yeah, Harrison Burton starting to fall back just a bit. He's back to the seventh position now, fighting to hang on to that with Ross Chastain just behind him. Chris Buescher, former winner here at Pocono. Chastain around Burton there in turn three and four. So there is a turn four here? <laughs> Be ready for me to do that all day. <laughs> to your defense, I could get from three corners to a simple five, even perhaps six. <laughs> oh. 
Testing way up the racetrack, man. This resin they put on this racetrack has really made it racy, very wide. A lot of different options for guys to go around in the corner instead of one single groove. Look at that move on the outside. Ah, it's an aggressive move. Tyler Reddick in the eight, making the move on the outside there. You don't expect your spotter to come over to radio, Jeff, and say, outside in the tunnel turn, do you? No. Oh, just powered it in there. And now looking to the inside, we see that 48. Alex Bowman is going to clear the 21 as well. Harrison Burton falling back quickly. Again, he was on pit road all the way back on lap 10. So a lot of laps on his tires. Logano on the same strategy. He's falling back to 15th. Ryan Blaney just in front of this group. We'll see a pusher in the Ford performance camera here to get a run down the straightaway as he shifts into high gear. It's a little bit to the left. Won't have really an opportunity to make a run. Will he dive to the outside? He saw that happen. Blaney, or actually Burton, using that higher groove. And in the mirror is the 99 car. Suarez trying to get underneath this 17 car, Busher. I don't know if that mirror would help me or distract me, because watching right here, <laughs> I'm looking at the mirror. I think the mirror is the coolest thing here. Yeah. It's definitely a nice tool, especially if you're trying to block or take the air from, from the guy behind you. This is this is as much as you need. This is great information you're seeing in the in the mirror. You see him go high, you go high. So I'm probably calling it the wrong thing. It's, it's really a rear view a camera, rear view I guess. Camera. Yeah. Guess Big run to 99. Weird. Watch him. Will he go low? Going to side draft. Now he's on the inside. That gives you a reference to see that the guy is there. What a great shot. Suarez trying to get by. Four position. This is for the 12th spot. Once again, push on that outside. You just got to, you can't give the fight up. When they drive underneath you in the tunnel turn, you just can hang tough right there. Look at Suarez using. That apron right in the middle of turn three, trying to get the car to turn. Busher not giving up. And look how tight they have to get to make the side draft actually work. We've seen them use that, but they have to get much closer together than the previous race car to make it work. And Busher's going to let him have it. Down in the corner goes Suarez. So allow Burton to get away. It's really interesting watching those guys run side by side down the front straightaway. How Harris was able to drive away from them side by side. They're making so much more drag. Marty. Hey, Jeff, I think teams are quickly realizing this is going to be a track position race. Chase Elliott, perfect example of that. On the first stop of the day, they didn't quite get the left rear indexed in time, and it took them a little bit longer. Lost four spots, restarted 15th. They've gone nowhere. He's sitting in 14th right now, just in front of Kevin Harvick right there. He said, guys, anything you can do to get me my track position back, I'll take it. We need it. All right, Rick, anything you could do to get track position, what does that mean? Well, when I look over about 41 to go in this stage, I think about another lap, and they're going to be inside their fuel window. We expect they can go 40 laps, so that'll get you to the end of the stage. Uh, so it wouldn't shock me. Next time or the next three or four or five laps, you start seeing a wave of cars. You got Harrison Burton out there on the oldest fuel tank. Back there in 11th, eight seconds behind the leader, so he has the option to pit. Logano's 11 seconds behind the leader, so he has the option to pit right here. This is Logano, so as we see the 43 turn to the inside, plus those old tires I think are starting to hurt the 22. So you probably want to call them in sooner than later. Well, talking about tires, oh, there's Jones. a hand. Yeah, Logano's trying to get over. Eric Jones pitted a little bit ago. He's made up 11 spots since he pitted on lap 49. So he's been able to work himself up through the field better than some others have. Well, we saw the hand out the window. Joey Logano left hand turn off turn three. Will come to the service of his team. I expect Harrison Burton to probably be the next lap. Now, I don't think this will be an absolute flood of cars, but the anxiety is building for those crew chiefs because now a yellow gives track position to Logano. So I do think we're going to see a steady state of pit stops, Marty. 
This is the strategy that Paul Wolf set up back at lap 10. We were talking about it a moment ago with Harrison Burton, Joey Logano coming down pit road, though the handling on the 22 Verizon car has not been great today. Joey saying, I have absolutely no grip anywhere. Look at that wedge adjustment, trying to get that car to tighten up for Joey Logano. So yes, they can make it to the end of stage two here, a plan they made way back at lap 10, Steve. Well, now the real question is, is we see Kyle Busch going down the front stretch, Joey Logano leaving pit road. All right, he's going to be safe. He's going to definitely stay out in the lead lap. These new pit stops change a lot. It also changes when you can pit and when you can. No more takers this time by, though, so I think we're going to have a little bit of break in pit stops Harrison's before the got leaders come. come. Doesn't he? Harrison does, but he's the only one. Everyone else is going to stay out, so we'll see if Harrison pits. Well, the laps are taking down here in stage two and Ryan, we're seeing drivers aggressively use that draft, that side yep. draft to gain position. We saw most recently that 99 of Daniel Suarez gaining position on that 17 of Chris Busher. From a driver's perspective, describe the draft and how crucial it is at Pocono. Yeah, the draft at, at Pocono especially uh, is so crucial because like I mentioned before, this place is huge. There's a lot of aerodynamic uh, factors to this racetrack that you know you need to be a part of uh i know yesterday in the xfinity series race if you lost that pack if you lost that draft you lost probably around four four to six tenths a lap if you didn't have that draft so we as we see harrison burton coming off of pit road uh the draft is very crucial uh when it comes to making up track position and, and also using it to your advantage well, and we just heard the announcers uh, echoing the drivers saying this is a track position race. Can you elaborate on that? Well, it's definitely a track position race, but I think Kyle Busch is proving us and them wrong by improving so many positions after his uh, big moment in turn number one. But yeah, track position is huge here at Pocono. You see how spread out we get. I mean, that's one of the big things about Pocono is it's so big. There's a lot of, you know, room to fan out. And so you're going to see that a lot. You know, there's a lot of aerodynamic struggles. As we see here, a side-by-side -side battle with Kevin Harvick and Chris Buescher. Uh, it's hard to pass sometimes, you know, especially now with the resin. You know, you're able to fight back on that top side lane. And you see it right there, Kevin Harvick now in the draft, right? He's going to set himself up for a pass out of turn number three. Try and use that side draft. And then the biggest thing is when you pull away. That's the biggest thing I had to learn as a driver yesterday was when you get here, you want to make sure that once you get to a certain point, you pull back off and you get that pass cleared. Because if you don't, they could just simply put it right back on your door and make sure that you don't get by. It's a very tricky game you're playing, oh, yeah. and we're seeing it, though, very visibly on the racetrack. It's making things very interesting to watch here from Pocono. Yeah, I mean, it's it, like I said, it's just another factor of what is already a crazy racetrack. Absolutely. Well, it's going to get even crazier as we send it back to racetrack. There should have been a V in there somewhere. You could be the lucky trivia winner throughout today's race. Follow at Bush Beer on Twitter and answer their tricky trivia questions using hashtag Bush Tricky Trivia and hashtag Sweepstakes for a chance to win big. Harvick running in the 12th spot now, and a couple guys come to pit road, Steve. Yeah, we mentioned there's going to be a big variety. So right there is the 18, Kyle Busch leading the race. Let's go in front of him. Cars that are barely on the lead lap. The 22 of Joe Logano came to pit road, serviced his car. He needed fuel. This was a strategy call, much like the 21 of, of Harrison Burton. So those two had to come. But a little bit of an aggressive call for the 48 of William Byer. Uh, I'm getting my names all messed up. The 48 Alex had to Bowman. come, Alex Bowman, because it was an aggressive call to try to work some strategy. So the 48 right here also came to pit road. I like this call to be aggressive and much like the 48, the 23 of Bubba Wallace. So we always talk about, hey, get me some track position, do something different. What does that mean? This is what it means. The 48 didn't need fuel. So, you know, Greg guys called the pit road, said, man, hopefully we'll get yellow. We'll, we'll circle to the front. Same thing for the 23 of Bubba Wallace. So. You know, two cars paying off the strategy they kind of were already married to. Booty Barker right here, crew chief for Bubba Wallace. He says, you know what? I'm going to give my guy a chance. We got to win to make the playoffs. So I'm going to 
not even a Hail Mary. A good calculated gamble for the 23. He knows from here he can make it to the end of the stage. Off sequence. We hear that all the time. Guys want to get off sequence. Well, luckily for me, William Byron heard me. I tried to put him in the 48, but the William Byron's on pit road now. Maybe I knew that he was dreaming about coming to pit road as long as the four of Kevin Harvick Parker. I really feel good with Alexa to take put him, take him down pit road here for William Byron. It's going to be four tires and fuel just been tight on the X of the quarter, so he'll do an air pressure adjustment in the 24, Kim. And Kevin Harvick, lots of complaints on that Ford for him right now. He says he can't drive in the corner hard enough. Four tires, no go fuel you see for Harvick. So now, what, what are these teams warning? Well, here's really the best way to think about it at home, right? There's 35, 34 laps to go in this stage. They wait until they know they can make it to the end of stage on fuel so they don't get themselves in a bad predicament. But now if a car spins out, something happens, anybody who hasn't pitted is going to pit, and you're going to cycle to the front. And that call is what's pushing these guys. And now Christopher Bell says, man, if a yellow comes out, I'm going to lose seven, eight, nine spots. So everyone else's call is driving the decisions up and down pit road, Kim. And Kyle Larson there in the five car just said he's starting to get a little bit loose. It's going to be four Goodyear tires for him, as well as Christopher there, Bell there on the bottom screen. He said it's just a little bit tight. He needs to be freed up. Air pressure adjustment, Marty. Here comes Chase Elliott down pit road, who, as we reported, requested a little track position from his team. Let's see if the pit crew can deliver here. Daniel Suarez leaving pit road as well. Going to be four fresh Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel for Chase Elliott, and a quick stop so far for that nine bunch. Leaders are expected to come this lap, too, including Kyle Busch and his teammate Martin Truex Jr. The other advantage of pitting without needing 17, 18 gallons of gas is these tire changers are so fast. In nine or 10 seconds, you can only get 13 gallons or so in the car. So if you need more than 13, your stop is going to be longer purely to put enough fuel in the car. So if you short these stops, pit when you only need 13 or 14, then you know when the tires are done, your car is leaving. So, you know, there's a lot of nuances to how long they're trying to be on pit road. The other big nuance is where you're gonna return to the racetrack. You don't wanna be in traffic. Kyle Larson putting the pressure on Bell. My goodness, he dove in the corner. Kyle Larson, one stage one, actually uh, announced this last week, driver of the year for 2022. So congratulations to Kyle Larson. Still out front, it's Kyle Busch, Mark Trex Jr. running in the second spot. Ross Chastain, Tyler Reddick, and Ryan Blaney all in the top five. This is the longest green flag run as we see Ross Chastain now on pit road. 16 laps of green flag racing. I know uh, we talked about Logano. He was on pit road. He is losing ground to the leader. I mean, Kyle Busch will have to pit. And even if he laps him, if we don't get a caution, he'll be okay. But Joey Logano does not have the speed that you would expect you would have, Parker. Right, you see Ross Chastain pulling away. He was very happy in that race car. The team was updating him on all the cars that were pitting and planning to come one to two after that, just like we saw here, because he's away off pit road. This is Logano about to go a lap down. Race leader Kyle Busch is going to pit. Yeah. Yep. Race leader Kyle Busch on pit road now, and they head all the way down pit road, Marty. Well, I can't imagine how tough that entry is to come on to pit road from 170 plus miles an hour all the way down to pit road speed. They had talked about bringing in Kyle Busch a couple of laps sooner, but they are so happy with this race car. Kyle said, I may be a little free on the exit of two, but really that's it. Very happy with how the 18 is going. Also, Chris Buescher having a nice solid run inside the top 10 for Roush Fenway, Keselowski racing. He's on pit road as well. We'll see where everybody cycles out, but Kyle Busch has been so quick here this afternoon. All right, cycles out. Left side of the screen, you see the 20 and the 18. I call them the dancing ants on the track. Bubba Wallace also. Bubba Wallace has service on his car, and that's the difference. I, you know what can make a big difference? The 18 comes out in front of two other cars, gapped him to the 23. You know, look at the two slower cars in between them. Now, Kyle can go through the tunnel without pressure on him from a car that's already up to speed, right? So, Bubba Wallace gained a little bit. If you see a little further back, the 20 of Christopher Bell, he had he came a little early as well. And his gap, I would say, if anything, maybe stretched a little. It didn't change a whole lot. It was about two and a half seconds before. So, 
Uh, so far, so good. No surprise. Kyle Busch so good at getting on and off pit road. And now we have Tyler Reddick in the pits, Marty. Boy, it's been a solid day for Tyler Reddick. Really coming up through the field after starting a little bit further back today. Maybe one of their best Pocono runs ever. Left him out a little bit longer. Randall Burnett told me all about execution. A clean stop for the A, Parker. Nice thing here for Chase Preska. He's been very happy with that 14 cars, four tires for him, and feeling he's away from pit road. We talked a lot, big news story coming in here. Kurt Busch out of the 45 car with concussion-like symptoms, puts Ty Gibbs in the car. What is going to be his biggest challenges? Well, he's going to have to learn the car, but how about this? Not a lot of green flag pit stops in Xfinity, guys. And all of the drivers I talked to this year said this car is just has such good brakes and such good downshifting, you can really attack pit road. He's in the first pit stall coming on to pit road. So getting to pit road will definitely be a challenge for Ty Gibbs, something I don't think he was ready for, not knowing he was even going to drive this car, Parker. Martin Trent Jr. kicked out of the lead, has not been happy with this race car at all throughout the day. The team trying to help him driving wise, looking at some of the data, but he just said, I am far too tight off the corners. They have not been able to get a turn. As you see, four tires, he's away. A little give and take between Truex and Almirola. Well done. Almirola getting service done on his car now at pit road. Ryan Blaney cycles up to the lead. How's your abacus working, Rick? You got all this figured out? <laughs> Let's listen in to Denny Hamlet's radio communication. All right, 19 green, 20 to go on our strategy. Not many on it with us. I like how this will play out. So that is Chris Gabehart telling Denny Hamlin we're going to run this stage long. In essence, they're going to planning to come to pit road with seven to go in this stage, Steve. It could work out. Chris Gabehart could be right, but boy, they are in the danger zone right now. Caution comes out. They lose all this track position. Well, caution comes out. They're going to lose track position to everyone that has pitted. And the other thing is, I imagine if they're going to run all the way to there, it all depends on how fast these next you know, handful of laps are, but is it going to be just a splash of gas to save some track? Then you'd have to come back to pit road, or they're going to take four tires and fuel. So we know they're going to run a lot of laps, but they haven't showed their hand on what cards they're going to play when they do come down pit road. I'm going to tell you who's showing his hand on speed all day long. Eric Jones was fast in practice yesterday, had a really bad qualifying run, not qualifying they wanted to, had to start in the back, and he has driven through the field. And I know we're in the middle of pitch strategies and all those kinds of things, but keep an eye on Eric Jones. He has enough pace today to possibly get a win if the strategy plays out. And if he were to get a win, imagine what that does to the playoff standings. Keep your eye on this guy right here, tons of speed. A lot of green flag laps, but it hasn't been that way all day. There has been drivers getting sideways about every turn around this track. Yeah, I mean, we, they talked about it on the broadcast, Denny Hamlin staying out as long as he can. Eric Jones showing a lot of speed that he had yesterday in today's race. Uh, the biggest thing that I'm noticing, and they talked about it on the broadcast, is obviously Denny Hamlin, they're really banking on this, this going green. They want this to go as long as they can because they want to make sure that they can at least maintain the track position that they have later on in this race. If the yellow comes out, they're going to lose all that. They're going to fall all the way back to probably, there's, I think there's probably 34, 33, 33, 32, 34 cars on the lead lap, they're going to fall all the way back near that, that range. So it's a gamble, but when you're playing with race wins, I think that's worth the gamble. It's a big gamble, and, and for a team like JGR, a team like the 11 team, they have wins this season. They know they're locked into the playoffs, so pitting with, I believe they said, about seven laps to go in mm -hmm. the stage, what is their thought process here in a long-term play? Their thought process is winning. That's that's plain and simple. You know, a lot of these guys who are pitting and you know doing different strategies, they're trying they're trying to get stage points. Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, they want stage points because Kyle Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson they haven't won a whole bunch this year. Um, they've only won one race apiece, Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch. So they want to try and pad their wallet with those stage points, like I said earlier, as much as they can, so that come playoff time, come elimination time, they have that uh, barrier. 
Well, those JGR cars have been strong all day today, but right now it's that 12 of Ryan Blaney who's currently leading the field. Things are shifting, though, as pit strategy, as we just talked about, is coming into play. We'll send it back now to Pocono Raceway. Great battle here as Ryan Blaney trying to hold off Eric Jones in the 43. This is for the lead. A different pit strategy for these guys running up front. We talked about it, Jeff, speeding his 43 car. They got popped with a big penalty. And you wondered if that was where the speed had come from. They showed up and were quick all practice and qualifying. Had a little issue. Even with that penalty and the adjustments to the car that they were needing to make. 43 car still has that top five, top ten speed as he goes after the lead. And again, the penalty was the crew chiefs for both the 42 and 43 out. So Joey Cohen for the 42, Danny Eflin crew chiefing for the 43 now. And I, I will tell you, sometimes I think calling a complicated like race like this, I'd be better off at home watching on TV. You got a lot more information down on the pit box sometimes. There was something going on in the rocker box, or, which is the rocker panel, kind of like down where the side skirt used to be. NASCAR didn't like. Yeah, so to clear that up, they didn't mess with the part. There's a hole there that's required, and they're allowed to put some screen over it. And it, simply enough, there's a restriction on the screen because they want enough air flowing through it. And I believe both the 42 and the 43 were too aggressive with the type of screen they used. It's clearly laid out in the rule book, and that was the penalty. So pre-qualifying, that's why the crew chiefs were ejected, Parker. And you guys alluded to it just they didn't just get here by a strategy that 43 has been fast starting the SRA in practice and i spoke to eric jones today and he said you know we have three more opportunities to win this place daytona obviously and he viewed as he going for the lead here below blaney because he felt like this place is one of his favorite racetracks he finished second here back in 29 and he said i love this place and i think we really have a car that can compete at the front we could win here today side, side by wins. side as they come into one for the lead eric jones on the inside Ryan Blaney on the outside. Can he clear him? He does. He drifts up the racetrack. Eric Jones up front at Pocono. Yeah, I don't think Blaney was going to fight too hard. You saw back in turn three, he had a big moment in the center of the corner. I think it was just a matter of getting down to turn one for him to allow the 43 to go through. Now Denny Hamlin puts a little pressure on this 12 car for second place. Hardy. Boy, Eric Jones using those fresher tires to get around the 12 car. Denny Hamlin trying to do the same thing here. So let's talk about this strategy, Steve, with Denny Hamlin and his race team. Chris Gabart did tell Denny Hamlin we're going to come down pit road with about eight to go. So at that point, we talked about them doing fuel only. Would you consider four fresh good years? And in essence, at that point in the race, you can eliminate an entire stop versus the rest of the field. Sounds like that would be the play to make here. Yeah, people are thinking these guys are a stop behind. They're actually a stop of head and it starts with the race leader Eric Jones lap 47 Hamlin 43 Dillon Austin Dillon Stenhouse McDowell Corey LaJoy I'm listing all the guys that this is going to apply to and basically they are going to run to somewhere between six and three laps to go in this stage come down pit road put four tires and fuel on when the caution comes out for the stage they're going to stay out cycle to the lead so they really are a pit stop ahead of the rest of the field Everyone has to make two more pit stops, so these guys are going to do it before. Now, the interesting thing is, will Blaney and some of these guys pit with them and try to jump onto their strategy, Kim? And Ryan Blaney there in that third position, last stopped on lap 31. He asked, what are we waiting for? In fact, screamed it on the radio. That was about a lap ago. They said, we're coming in four to five laps. So, Steve, if you're Jonathan Hassler, what is the wait for? What are you telling your driver when he's panicking, seeing everybody else stop? Well, you, you have to figure out exactly where you want to be in fuel windows. And like I mentioned earlier, the time of how much fuel you're putting in the car. Ryan Blaney, I know he's panicking because he's losing the spot to Jones and Hamlin. But his crew chief, I don't believe, is, is racing those two. Or like I said, he's going to try to flip over and jump onto their strategy. That's why he's going to try to run it out as long. To be honest, there's a lot of options, which is great for a crew chief. That's why I love this racetrack. It can't be complicated. But man, you are standing there with a lot of options in your roadmap of strategy. As a driver though, Steve, I want to know, what are we doing? Like, I want to understand the strategy. I feel like I'm out there by myself. I know my tires are old. My car's not driving like it wants to. I see people passing me. Why are we doing this? I just want to understand it. I don't want to make the call, Junior, but I do want to know why we're doing this. 
Information is important to some and not to others. Jeff, for sure, I think you're one I would have to lay it out to. <laughs> you know, you would want to know. So Blaney has fallen back to third. It's Eric Jones out front, Denny Hamlin up to the second spot. And then Ryan Blaney in third, Austin Dillon fourth, Ty Dillon fifth. Again, Blaney and Ty Dillon, they last came to pit road on lap 31. So they will have to come to pit road a little bit sooner than the other guys, that strategy that you were talking about. And I love what I'm seeing out of this 43, not only with his strategy, Steve, but the pace in the car. He just ran the third fastest lap on the racetrack. We've got cars that came to pit road, got better tires, and he's still outperforming or running as good as guys with new tires. That's what I was going to say. We can make a lot about fuel strategies and tire strategies, and it is going to determine who wins this race. But it, you can call the best strategy in the world. If your thing, if your car is just not fast enough, it ain't going to work. You can't hold track position even if you get it. So to your point, Fast car underneath Eric Jones. Great job by the driver. The team's trying to back it up with a good stretch. Kyle Busch, who was leading this race when he came to pit road, now he's 17 seconds behind the leader running in the eighth position. Now up to seventh. Just got by McDowell. Marty. Rick, I think everybody else in this field is starting to realize, Steve, what's happening. That, in essence, the 43 of Eric Jones, Denny Hamlin, Austin Dillon, and Ricky Stenhouse can eliminate a stop from the race because they just told Kyle Busch on the radio a moment ago, no saving, go as hard as you can right now. They know they have a quick car. They're trying to make up as much gap as they can right now. Yeah, if I'm the 18 team, I I'm thinking about flipping over and jumping on with them. You know, I know I was just on pit road 13 laps ago, but he's so fast. He's driven it all the way up into the seventh position. As much as I would like to win a stage and get those points, I, I would just have to think at 14 more laps, I might come back, back down pit road one more time just to try to get on the strategy of these other cars. Uh, but, it, you know, it's easier said. I've, I've always said it, Rick. You let me know when the yellows will come out, and I'll tell you exactly when you should pit. Well, I can tell you the end of the stages. Yeah, okay. The problem the is, is yeah, it, once, we get, once we get into stage three, that final stage, I can't tell you when those cautions will come out. Yeah, the simple fact is with all the strategy talk, let's not forget there is battles everywhere right here. Kyle Larson, the 16 and the one, a heated battle. This is for 12, well, 11th through 13th, basically. Gregson currently 12th, Larson 11th, Chastain 13th. Right behind Chastain, you see the nose of William Byron poking out. Oh, Chastain's got to get a move to the outside. Oh, well, he's racing with some good guys right here. Getting some really good experience at the cup level. Racing with some winners. 16 hasn't looked like he's coming to pit road. No, just stuck on the bottom of the racetrack, I guess. I know where to go. I think he's just being really conservative here. Oh, good you point. know, he talked about, and. Ty There's Gibbs a, comes to pit road. Yeah, first stop. green flag pit stop for Ty Gibbs in the Cup Series. Kim. And a really good stop there. He's got the first available box. They told him earlier in terms of his braking, his brake pressure maybe a tick more than most of the guys, so adjust that. He has done that throughout the race. You see four tires, Sunoco fuel. He told them, I just have too much wheel, meaning he was a little tight. They said, okay, we'll free you up. Air pressure adjustment as Ty Gibbs makes his first green flag stop in the Cup Series. Here comes Ryan Blaney oh, and locking him up a little bit, though, slowing down, trying to get to pit road as quickly as possible. Kim. And it started to sputter, meaning they were starting to get out of fuel. They kept Blaney on a little bit longer than he wanted to be. He has had every complaint in the book, loose in and one and three on entry, tight on. At one point he said, I'm just trying not to wreck this thing. Four tires for Ryan Blaney as they hold him for getting that fuel cell completely full. Here's your example, Rick, right? When you're almost out of gas, you can change tires quicker than you can put fuel in your car. It does slow down your stop. Eric Jones still out front, has about a second lead over Denny Hamlin running second.
Well, it's the 43 of Eric Jones that is currently pacing the field. We spoke briefly earlier that they had kind of a rough start to the weekend. Both GMS Petty, Petty GMS race cars uh, had inspection penalties for the rocker box assembly. So both teams losing their crew chief and mm -hmm. 35 points docked. That's big, which puts them in a bit of a must win situation when it comes to the playoffs. I mean, it definitely puts them in a must win position, both for the 42 and the 43. Uh, the 43. Oh, I mean, as a spin on the track. Speaking of the 42, uh, the 42 has gone around it looks out of the, the tunnel turn everybody avoids and looks like we're back but crazy and, stuff and it looks like the caution will be out here once again on the track but again both of these cars facing must win situations but that 43 really doing well here towards the end of stage two we saw him run the fastest lap on the racetrack here late in the end of the stage why is that ryan well it's because of the fact you know less weight you know what i mean they've they've gone through all the fuel inside the car so obviously the car's a lot lighter you also talk about how mechanically gripped up these cars are wider tires a lot of underbody aero it's going to help these cars in the long run get continue to maintain that speed even with the tires degrading as much as they are uh you see right here the 42 showing the replay right now i uh, just nicks the wall a little bit with the left rear i mean no no significant contact he got it back to pit road just fine Ah, just got loose out of the tunnel turn got to those bumps those bumps is where the, I knew that we were gonna have a problem there You know what I mean? We saw it earlier with with Denny Hamlin. We're seeing it again right here with uh, Ty Dillon goes over those bumps Knocks those sideways knocks that car sideways a little bit and once you're sideways with this next gen race car It's hard to save it well trouble on the track for that 42 But as you can see here, they've brought it in and thankfully it doesn't look like there's too much damage to that race car So they should be able to get that one out there pretty quick. No, and that goes back to the composite body as well You know, I mean he hit it with the left rear obviously there's not even a dent there You know, there's a little bit of a scratch But four fresh Goodyear Eagles going on that race car making sure everything looks good checking the, the flap on the diffuser making sure that's back up and just making sure that you know everything's straight That's the big thing if everything's straight then you're good to go. Obviously, this place is very fast. You don't want to lose any advantage you can have. Well, that 42 is back out there, and as you see, that 43 continues to lead the field of Pocono. Under caution, you're watching the M&M's Fan Appreciation 400. It's telecast presented by Brent's Tree. 42, Ty Dillon goes around in the tunnel turn, just right down there next to the apron. Car just gets loose. Spins it around, a little contact here. Yeah, he had just pitted a couple laps before and had a lot of grip on his tires and expected the car to stick, and it just didn't. All right, Steve, after all of that strategy talk we had, yeah. who's in the best position? Ryan Blaney is in absolutely the greatest position because he can make it on one more stop, and that's why you see how busy pit road is because every other competitor knows it. This is the window. You have to come now and fill up these tanks. Kim. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in your top left, just reporting a little tighter this run than the last one. The call four tires, Sunoco fuel, and you see that chassis adjustment just to free him up. Austin Dillon also tight, four tires, Sunoco fuel for him. Parker. And on the bottom left, your screen, Eric Jones pit out of the lead there, just low on overall grip, he told them, and then they said four tires, and we're going to wait on the fuel to get that thing as full as possible, Marty. Denny Hamlin freeing up as he went on the run right there. He's waiting for a head nod here from his crew members. There he goes, leaving pit road. His teammate Kyle Busch actually gains a ton of spots here on pit road and wins the race off pit road. Hamlin said the car just too free at the end of that run. This does put, Rick, everybody on the strategy where they can make it on one more stop. Rick, before you get mad at your pit crew, everyone needed a different amount of fuel. That's a lot of the speed difference on pit road. So another opportunity then for teams to pit. We're seeing even mm -hmm. more pit strategy come into play. Yep. What are we looking at here, Ryan? Well, that caution came out at a very unique time, obviously. You know, it's chest towards the end of that, that fuel run that a lot of these guys were trying to stretch it as much as they could. You know, now this kind of puts them in a weird spot. You know, who still needs to worry about, okay, do I pit now? Do I stay out? You know, what do I do? How do I sacrifice this track position? And obviously we were talking about the, the Petty GMS team, the 43 and the 42. Unfortunate luck for the 42, but for the 43, we see the speed that he has. You know, as we mentioned, he ran the third fastest lap. 
late into a run, which is very important to, to know that he has a very good car on these long runs. Um, must win situation. Very important. He needs to be there at the end of these races. He has a lot of opportunities left this season to get that win. I think today is very re realistically a chance for him to do so. So we talked earlier about the 11 team. They are looking at their goal for today is a win. We have 11 mm -hmm. laps to go now here in the second stage. Mm -hmm. If I'm this petty GMS 42 team that wants to, excuse me, 43 team that wants to win, what's my pit strategy here for the rest of the race? Ooh, man, I mean, if I'm them, I'm focusing on stage three. I'm finishing on the run of the checkered flag, not the run of the green and white checkered flag because of the fact that he needs to make the playoffs off a win. Currently, right now, he is so far down in the points because of that points penalty. Before, there was still a shot. There was still, you know, he, he could have a lot of races go his way and maybe point his way in. Now, that's pretty much out the window. They need to win. And I think, like I mentioned, today, they have a great shot of it. They have a couple races that are in their, you know, in their wheelhouse coming up that I think they have a shot. But as we've seen today, they have speed. They need to capitalize when they have that speed. Well, and as we mentioned, that, that pre-race penalty as well, taking away a few crew members, they know they have some challenges ahead of them. Mm -hmm. So they definitely, like you said, want to capitalize on the speed that they're showing here today, late in stage two. Yeah, you mentioned the crew members, they lost two, both their crew chiefs ejected mm -hmm. for uh, the violation. So uh, definite, definite blow to both organizations. When you don't have your crew chief, you lose that synergy. You lose the people that you work with, the core of your team. So that's going to be a big blow. You know, you talk about, you know, the points and all that stuff, but I'm also looking at that. You know, you're not working with the familiar voice you have in your ear. You know, you have a voice that you recognize that you trust, and now that's gone. So, very interesting situation there, and uh, hopefully they can uh, overcome that. That familiarity cannot be understated, really. Oh, yeah. We saw that yesterday with teams and spotters having um, some of those problems, but definitely something to keep an eye on here as, as the laps continue to tick down. Let's send it back to Pocono as we're taking the green here soon. Second stage, still a lot of racing ahead, 75, but the field is starting to shape up. Bubba Wallace stays out. He becomes the leader of the race. Let's listen in to Booty Barker and Bubba on their strategy. Are you good with that? I am. Oh, yeah, I am. But our play right now is you just hang in there, get all you can. We're going to flip the stage most likely again. Keep rocking. Simple, I'm with you. All right, so last pit, you see it. 57, everyone else in the 80s, Blaney was the one who came under green. So, Jeff, you wanted all the information. That's what Booty just gave Bubba. He painted the picture. Let's decode that. We are going to run like six more laps, pit under green, and try to cycle it. My concern is most of the cars at 84 are not coming at the end of the stage. I think drivers, they're, they're committed to their strategy, but the difference is, Dale Jr., someone back there is going to say, I didn't get a good start. I'm not driving very good. I don't know if that's 15th or 20th. Where in the pack are you screaming back at me and saying, man, I need new tires? Forget that strategy. Let's try to make sure I don't wreck this thing. I think it's definitely outside of the top 10, probably 12th to 15th. Everybody from on back is coming back to pit road at the end of this stage. And those will be the cars that Bubba hopes to pass, but that's only going to put him, you know, right around 15th to 10th. So not sure if that that's going to work out for them or not. But Bubba's had a fast enough car to run in the top eight, top five. He's going to have a little work to do to get there. And you just don't know when the other yellows are coming. And sometimes for a race team, this might sound silly, but when you've been battling all year long, let's just remind ourselves we can lead a race. Let's just stay out. It's not a crazy call, Parker, but let's lead a race and, and prove to ourselves we belong up here. Right, Stephen, just to elaborate more on Bubba and how they got in this position. Remember, he had the track position before, was running in the top five because they had flipped the strategy earlier in the race. But in that last run, he lost to handling that 23 car, lost many positions. And so as you heard, Booty Barker elected to put them once again in a good track position position here, hopefully getting a uh, some sort of advantage here, Marty. Hey, Parker, can we throw one thing more into the mix here? We are past halfway. I'll start with that point. But look at the radar. There is rain on the way. Several teams talking about that. So we may not make it full destination today. 74 laps to go in this race. Rain in the area. So what's going to come first, guys? Checkered flag or that rain? I didn't have that in my pitch strategy calculator up here, so I don't know. <laughs> so listen, Bubba Wallace needs to come in before the end of the stage, or we think that's a strategy. Blaney, Bush, Chastain, Jones, it's go time. I mean, you guys are all kind of on the same strategy. This restart, vital. Bubba's got a ton of laps on his tires compared to everybody else. This will be tough for him. Getting through turn one. Bubba Wallace on the outside, and on the inside, Ryan Blaney. Away from the racetrack, these two are best friends. Right now, they're fighting for the lead in Pocono. 
Great organization in the outside. Oh, the 12 gets loose. Three wide off a of turn two. Chastain backs out. He's going to have to defend. They're going to go by him as Chastain oh, drops back and he slides in right in front of William Byron. Byron will fall back a bit now as the five of Kyle Larson was making the move. Here comes Eric Jones in the 43 trying to look to the inside for another position. That let Chastain get to the outside of him. Now he slides back in. Here's a battle for the lead. The 18 easily clearing the 23. So Kyle Busch back up front of Pocono. But I like Bubba Wallace trying not to tend as much and get back in line. Unfortunately, now Blaine is on the inside. Yeah, Bubba's done a nice job here on much older tires. It was unrealistic to think he was going to be able to hold on to this lead. Minimize the damage is his job. Chastain driving up through the field now in the top three. He passes Bubba, slides up in front of the 23 to take his line away. The 11, oh, almost squeezes the 43 of Jones into the outside wall off of two. Jones fights hard to be able to take that position back. What a battle. William Byron's coming back into the picture now in that 24 as he's right behind the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Look at the inside. Place, yeah. yeah, here comes Ross Chastain in the one. Well, Chastain, no surprise the speed that he has. I thought he had the best car in practice yesterday by far. Spun the car, damaged it, qualified poorly, started in the back to fix that damage, and now he's got that speed back. Jones on the inside of the 23 down there into turn one. He's going to clear Bubba down in the corner here. Then he's going to go the inside of the 23. Try to clear him off a of two. I was going to hang there, and that's going to frustrate Denny a little bit. Big run coming behind them from the four car of Harvick. The tunnel turn once again. Remember, that was where Denny Hamlin was down on the apron and slid. This time, no problems through there as Harvick looks to the inside. He's going to try to get by Bubba. They were terrible in practice. you got to give him a lot of credit. Rodney Childers and his whole team really worked on this four car for Kevin. He has a lot of speed now. Getting better and better throughout the race. I asked Kevin this morning, what do you think you have? He said, I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Right. Brothers Pizza giving us this great shot out the back. Right now, he's got the sixth place car for Kevin Harvick, who's searching for a win. It's been 63, over 63 races for him to get to victory lane, Kim. And they've had an uptick in performance recently. Haven't finished worse than 12th in the last five races. And I asked crew chief Rodney Childers, what do you owe that to? And he said, it's a result of a hundred different small things, including making the car better, but also Kevin getting more comfortable with this new car. He was one of the drivers, the veteran drivers, that struggled initially with this next-gen car, slowly but surely learning what to do and what he can do with this car, Marty. Kim Kyle Bush out front, and we said before the last stop, he's happy with the car. We weren't kidding. Here's his only radio transmission to Ben Bayshore before the last stop. About a one or two tight off a of two. About it. Everything else seems pretty good. So, Steve, as someone who listens to a lot of Kyle Busch radio, if you're Ben Bayshore sitting on top of that box and that's all your driver had to say during that last run, you know he's got a really good car. Well, me and Jeff Burton picked him to win the race for a reason. Comments in the media, more positive. Smile before the race, more positive. I think this is Kyle Busch's day. I think he's ready to put this contract conversation to bed. And the best way to get power back in his court is to win a race. And remind everybody that he's a two-time champ and a 60-race winner. Now, that doesn't change the business of racing, but that's all Kyle Busch can do as a race car driver in the race is go for the win. He said in pre-race, the best medicine, win. And that's what he's trying to do here. All right, as we come to three to go, this is probably the moment you're going to see Bubba Wallace turn left to come to pit road. There you go. The question is, will he be alone? Will anybody else join him for tires? Most cars staying on the racetrack. So I think this is the concern for Bubba Wallace. These guys that are staying on the track back here, they're not pitting at the end of the stage. We're just going to have to wait and see in three more laps. Parker, it's a lonely pit road. And it is, and he's still pretty tight in that race car. He's doing a good job on those old tires. It will be four tires and filling it full of fuel as they try this alternate strategy and almost a Hail Mary of sorts here on the 23 team to see if they can uh, get back to the front here. This battle up front, you know, we see 
Bubba Wallace. Big concern. They just don't want to have a, a penalty or lose a lap, have an issue. It looks like a pretty clean stop as this battle continues. All these guys are thinking points and stage wins and, you know, it's kind of a big reset, Rick. I mean, really, we have about a 68-lap race now. Everyone's kind of equal, the whole front of the field. Christopher Bell struggling, losing positions. And it'll be interesting because we won't see hardly anyone on pit road at the end of this stage if this strategy is playing out the way that you talked to. I would assume not. I think if you were going to pit at the end of the stage, you would have just come a couple laps earlier like Bubba Wallace did. You see 48 out of line. Everybody else tucked up pretty close. There's another car. I think that's a three of Austin Dillon out of line. And the RCR car is running right there together. 13th and 14th. Good run for that group. Look at the rundown. You know, Bush has a win. Chastain, winner. Blaney, no. Jones, no. Harvick, no. I mean, there are some concerns for the playoff picture inside that top 10. Some real names. Truex back there in 12. So, you know, as we're closing in on the end of stage two, all of those playoff predictions that we talk about, road courses in Daytona, well, why not Pocono? I mean, it happened last week with Christopher Bell in New Hampshire. Harvick's outside of that playoff window right now, as is Eric Jones in the 43. So either of those win, that pushes Mark Trex Jr. out. Mark Trex Jr. right now running in the 12th position. Blaney also right now just in on points as he's under attack from the 43 of Jones, trying to take that third spot away. And there to stay alongside right here. Again, we've seen this multiple times. Eric Jones on the bottom. Good momentum into the corner, though. Blaney will try to roll on the outside. He does. He fights hard to be able to keep this spot. The side draft from the 43 is coming. Look how close they have to get. They have to be that aggressive to make it work and like where it has in previous years. Where does Hamley go? Who's he going to try to push? Oh, Hamley got really tight right there. Off turn three. And again, the win of the stage goes to Kyle Busch. A photo finish between the two for that third spot, and it goes to Blaney. Blaney gets Eric Jones for the third position. Hamlin is fifth. Harvick, William Byron, Daniel Suarez, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Larson rounding out the top 10. So Kyle Busch wins stage two. Can he hang on and win the race at Pocono? Kyle Busch is your stage two winner. There's a lot here going on now as we look at stage three. We do still have six regular season races until we start the playoffs, but you know these guys are paying attention to that bubble right now. Yep. Martin Truex Jr., the only JGR driver that does not have a win yet this season. He's the first guy above the cut line, 68 points. Ryan, you were just making the point that that's, that's still pretty to the good there. That's not too much to be worried about. It's a good cushion. However, the trends we've seen this season. Yeah, I mean, it's a good points cushion. That's the only good part about that. There's been so many new winners, so many different, different winners this season. There's only two spots available currently on points. And there's still multiple races left before the playoffs. So Martin Truex is sitting here looking at, you know, all these winners and is hoping, A, he wins, or B, someone who's already won wins again. Because if somebody like an Eric Jones comes in who's not near the points, you know, the points uh, break, break away, that's going to flip this playoff upside down. That's going to basically knock Truex out by a wide margin. That's also going to put Blaney in the danger zone when it comes to making the playoffs. Well, and there are a number of drivers still in the field this season that I wouldn't put it past them to get a win still this season. Yeah, I mean, you look at, you know, obviously we talked about him, Eric Jones being very strong today. He's a very strong at tracks like Michigan and Daytona. Bubba Wallace stayed out trying to play some strategy. He's very good at the super speedways and, you know, a lot of varying tracks. Uh, there's so many drivers. Kevin Harvick's another one. Harvick's right below that cutoff line. Eric Almarola, another great super speedway driver. There's so many really good drivers who haven't won this year. I mean, look at the list of drivers who won in 2021 that haven't won this season. Martin Truex Jr., Ryan Blaney, Eric Almarola, Brad Keselowski, Bubba Wallace, and Michael McDowell all won last year and haven't won this year. I mean, that's another one, Michael McDowell. The Indy Road Course is next week. That's right. I think he has a shot there. 
six races still and as to your point a lot of different styles of racing still to go so a lot can happen but we still have one more stage here from Pocono got it tonight world track and field championships continue from Eugene Oregon that coverage on NBC and Peacock at 9 8 central last night it was the USA women Winning the four by 100 meter relay, taking that goal. I'll see takers here coming to pit road. I'll push through a little head fake. We knew there'd be the second half of the field would come. The 17 of Chris Busher decides he doesn't want to be the first car on old tires, so he pits um, out of about the 16th position. I think that's a good call, right? Because someone was going to be upside down on tires and fuel, Parker. Right, exactly, and this also allows them to maybe have a shorter stop in this third stage here, fuel-wise, so four tires. You see that adjustment in the right rear for Chase Briscoe here, Marty. Yeah, the thought for Chris Buescher as well coming down pit road. Yes, they pitted at lap 84, but you got to do something different. Meanwhile, for Joey Logano and Paul Wolf, man, it has been a struggle today with the handling of this race car. He has constantly said just absolutely no grip on the racetrack. Going to see if these four fresh Goodyear tires can help. How about that three wide race off pit road there, Rick, yep. under this caution? Yeah, pretty tight there, Marty. I don't mind this call. You know, track position is good if you have it, but if you don't have it, how are you going to get it? Well, put some fresh tires, maybe get a little luck. And again, a lot stayed on the racetrack. Kozlowski was the first off. All right, Ryan, quickly before we take the green, were you surprised to see that pit stop there? No, I mean, obviously only a handful of takers really. I think it was roughly nine to 11 cars that pitted there. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see where they shake out. Obviously they were playing a little bit of a long run, just trying to see how they can maximize the day. A lot of those guys had trouble early. We saw LaJoy as one of those names as well. So uh, really a lot of guys just trying to maximize the day there. Well, we have one more stage for those guys to maximize it. Let's see what they can do here in stage three. Such an incredible sight on Eminem's Fan Appreciation Weekend here at Pocono, and it has been wonderful. The grandstands filled up and a beautiful afternoon for racing and we're going to go to the peacock pit box and kp i think you had some interesting fan interaction back in 1993 here didn't you yes i did i met a fan right dead in the middle of the racetrack here he is running out i'm leading the race davy allison is running second you come off turn one boom there's the guy over the wall great form right there I, I give him a 10 showed up in victory lane with with uh with a video camera just such fond memories i started coming here in 1972 73 was here when my dad won the first race here in 1974 and i'm telling you something i don't believe i've ever seen this amount of fans up here they've opened up the infield it's a sellout on the infield the grandstands are sold out eminem's fan appreciation day let me tell you, if any fans need appreciated, it's the ones that come out to this racetrack. They have done it for so many years. So it, that's pretty spectacular to me to think that that much history is here and these fans keep coming out. Now, as far as this race goes, I agree with Steve Latart. This is a total reset. We saw some strategy playing out, Steve and Jeff and Junior. You guys followed it perfect up there. Uh, and it, it was very interesting to follow the storylines, but all those storylines go away now and it's a new race. Set zero, everybody's equal. Let's see what comes out. Yeah, it's inside 65 laps to go, 62 to go, and, and everybody in the entire field needs to stop one more time. Some need a little more fuel than others, but it's, at this point, drivers, everything should be kind of clear in front of you, at least the mission at hand. Well, it's very clear for Kyle Busch, and you know, you and I picked him to win this race. Uh, we saw how fast he was in practice. There's a lot swirling around him, and that's, that's the times that you see Kyle Busch really step up, and I, I just, it's gonna be very tough to get by him been fast all day, fast yesterday. People got their work cut out for them. They're going to beat Kyle today. Exactly right, Jeff. Going to be tough to get by him. When's your best opportunity on these restarts? The pushing and the helping down into turn one has to stop. At some point, you've got to make moves for yourself. If you're Ross Chastain, Blaney, Eric Jones, Hamlin, all those guys back there, you can't really start. you got to stop helping and do what you need to do to be able to take positions. That's why Kyle Busch is up front. 
He's been aggressive on restarts. He's not helping and pushing people. He's passing people. And so on these next couple of restarts, these guys back there in the second row, third row, got to get aggressive. He's passing people. He's not helping people. Calvo is trying to find victory lane. Let's get a few updates as we're watching the drivers choose either inside or outside. We'll start with Parker. Right, Rick, and we talk about all the time putting together the whole weekend. We'll look no further than Ross Chastain, that one car. They how fast he was in practice, but had a late spin. That damaged the underside of that race car. They didn't qualify that well. They decide to sh sort of fix that race car, start the back in 35th, and it's taken them all race. They get up here to the top three and put himself in position to go for the lead that race of this race. Very happy to handle that race car once he got in clean air, though, Kim. Well, Parker, Kevin Harvick is not just looking for his first win of the season. He's looking to break a 63 race winless streak. I talked to crew chief Rodney Childers this morning. He said he felt like their strong suit was the long run. Early in the race, Kevin had a laundry list of complaints with the car. They have just adjusted and adjusted, be it chassis adjustments or air pressure. It is going better for Harvick now. Still needs a little more. He currently runs in the sixth position, Marty. Boy, it seems like a couple of days ago that Chase Elliott finished second in stage one. They lost all those spots in that tough pit stop on pit road, and it's taken him the entire time to get back up to the top ten here. Elliott sitting right now in the ninth spot and wondering what everybody else in the field is wondering. How in the world has Kyle Busch gotten all these spots on restarts? Listen. Those spots, I'm drawing a blank. So basically, you guys push the uh, you push the 20 kind of up onto the 99, and that stacked up the tunnel. And he was at the bottom of the tunnel and took the 19 and the 23 wide and the three, cleared them both. Gotcha. Yep. So Chase looking for a few pointers, guys. Anything to get that track position back. Cars way different when they're up front with that clean air. I'm going to say thank you to Geico. Great shot. Uh, from up above here, our aerial coverage brought to them, brought to us by Geico. All right, Steve, the 23. Very simple, 20 cars stay on the racetrack. The 23 of Bubba Wallace pitted before this danger, and he'll restart in the 21st position right behind him. All the other cars that pitted under the yellow, we'll see if it works out. We'll see if those fresher tires will help him on this start. Back up through the gears they go. The final stage at Pocono underway. Organization in both lanes going to go down into turn one nearly side by side. Ross Chastain <laughs> drives it down in there. Can it stick? No, it slides up. He has to lift. Eric Jones gave him a good shove, and now Eric Jones trying to fight for that third spot with Brian Blaney. Chastain still came out in second, so still in great shape. Eric Jones now Hamlin making it three wide. And they come into the tunnel turn. Hamlin on the inside. Blaney way outside and is going to be able to hang on to oh. the car, but very close. Big wiggles as they exit turn two. Hamlin takes the spot away. Looked like Blaney was waving at Hamlin down the straightaway. Blaney's loose. He's really mad. loose. It's mad what he is. He drove down into turn three, trying to get to the back bumper to that 11 car. Overdrove the corner, slid way up the racetrack, losing lots of spots and momentum. I swear down the, down the short shoot in the three, I could see something like he was waving, trying to point it. Then he was so angry, but then he basically chopping his line on corner exit of the tunnel. William Byron trying to get by. Eric Jones, but Jones fighting back on the outside, not going to have enough momentum. Here comes Blaney once again. He gets way up in the loose stuff as well. Loses lots of positions, lots of momentum. Harvey going by. Christopher Bell. Look at Blaney. See if you can see that windshield. Look at his hands right there. And he gets another run. Basically, the, four, the 11 just kind of comes up the racetrack, takes his line away. Just racing, hard racing. Blaney didn't appreciate it, but he tries to get down the corner. Look at him get sideways. Wow. Car just turned dead sideways on him, Jeff. Yeah, the big loser in all that, too, is Eric Jones. All that momentum slowed him up, and now doesn't seem to have the car that he really needs right now. All, all the adjustments must have been working for Harvick as he's moved up into the seventh position. But the 12 of Ryan Blaney, I'm sure he is a little agitated. Listen to his radio. So sick of sucking. They get used up every corner. Sure get, enough. The tire getting used up every corner, and it gets old, yeah. you got to start, you know, pushing back on guys and, and talking to them. One on one sometimes doesn't work. You have to push it back with your race car sometimes, don't you, Jeff? Yes, you do. 
Unfortunately, when that happens, you endanger yourself and get yourself in trouble. Kim. But Ryan Blaney making the most of what is a very ill handling race car currently in the fifth position before that last restart. He radioed to the team and you guys, it's rough in one, it's tight in the tunnel, it hits the bumps like crazy. And then when he gets into turn three, this is key because we've seen a lot of mistakes here this weekend. He said he has nothing to lean on in turn three. It is absolutely wrecking loose. Not a good recipe as a race car driver at Pocono. That, you know, not have anything to lean on in turn three. We've seen how much trouble there's been already over there. And it just absolutely destroys your speed, not being able to run through turn three with the speed you need. Heads to the front straightaway and just no momentum down it. There were the bumps there for Busher as we ride along on the helmet cam. See Logano on the outside. Heard about Blaney, the trouble he's had. And I think Logano would say everything he said, multiply it by three. Logano has really struggled. Busher coming up on Harrison Burton here in the 21. And he had enough speed, I think, to get beside the 21 besides the pushing down the straightaway. I think it's that gaggle of cars behind him. They've been worked their way through. He doesn't want to get put back in that again. Maybe he's trying to push that 21 away from him a little bit before he tries to make the pass. Haley underneath. Logano talked about <laughs> just has been a big struggle for that 22 team. Noah Gregson there in the 16, also trying to get into the mix. Both the college cars right there together. Gregson, one of the free agents out there in the Xfinity Series, that has been rumored to possibly have some opportunities to go cup racing, and this is a great experience for him to have some time in his car. He did himself some good yesterday. You know, he received a lot of criticism after the big wreck road america that he caused did it intentionally put a lot of pressure on him answered the call yesterday intense battle had to run about 25 perfect laps to get the one to get the win we'll get a lot of eyeballs back on him and here comes eric jones looking at the inside now of chase elliott we know the story that there was a penalty infraction the crew chiefs were ejected so he's not here today but dave ellens this matchup with Eric Jones has been a real uh, positive move for this 43 car. Eric runs, I think, the, the best we've seen this 43 run in quite some time. Behind the wheel does a nice job, but they give him a good car to drive. It's, that's like a side draft, side bump they have to get so close. Yeah, they're talking to Eric about getting a new deal, and I wouldn't sign it unless Dave was part of it. Like, that's the way I would do it if I was Eric Jones. I said, look, you, you got me as long as you keep Dave here to, to, to be, uh, build these cars for me because they, they definitely have been able to improve their performance bringing Dave in. And Junior, you're speaking from experience. You had him as a part of Junior Motorsports, uh, was helping Noah Gregson. But now we see him, and I think he's helped the entire organization there at Petty GMS. Yeah, for sure. Great battle there. Suarez trying to go down to nine car. There's a little blocking going on there. Suarez wasn't going to have it. Takes the position away. Chase struggling right now. Teammate Larson runs him down. Eric Jones running eight. Suarez ninth. Chase Elliott back in ten. Kyle Busch, a half a second is all that separates the top two right now. Chastain back there just five tenths of a second behind. It'll be interesting to see if Ross can, can close in any more. I'm kind of surprised that he's even that close, as good as Kyle's been. We haven't seen Chastain up this, you know, up with this opportunity. We know that he had so much pace in practice, spun out, hurt his race car, back in the race with great pace. So it's Kyle Busch, a half a second lead over Ross Chastain. Only 53 laps remain at Pocono. Up in the wall, looks like the 12 of Ryan Blaney. Left rear tires flat on that car. Way up the racetrack was Ryan Blaney. Again. Still coming inside. Still coming inside after this 23, clear by 15. Clear down, clear by 15. A lot of chunks we've really never seen. No caution has come yeah. out, by the way. Not yet. We haven't seen if this car can get around without throwing the carcass off the wheel or anything like that, so we'll pay attention to that. That would bring a yellow out. Laney smartly went to the apron. He was running fifth, and we saw it when the 11 went by him. He wiggled quite a bit. We thought it was frustration, maybe an ill or handling car. He does a nice job in turn one, just uh, between talent and a little bit of luck, I'm sure, and where it went down, stayed out of the wall. I know that's no 
help to him now as he limps around to get to pit road. And NASCAR is watching this car very closely to see if anything comes off of it. Puts debris on the racetrack. There he is up the racetrack. You mentioned it, Steve. That is a great job to keep from making contact with the wall. And no caution as of yet. And he made it all the way to his pit. So the, you know, they go to work on that. Kyle Busch stays out front and still has that half a second lead over Ross Chastain. And they try to jack up the left side of the car. We make this injury even worse with 52 to go. He's not inside a fuel window. So all of this he's losing is really poor Don. He's going to have to still pit again with everybody else. Although the battle up here, Chastain has closed it down to under three tenths of a second on Kyle Busch. I am surprised because I didn't think that Chastain had the pace to stay there, and now we'll be able to see if anybody can pass this 18 car. It's been a rocket ship. We've seen a little bit of passing back in the pack, but not really anybody been able to go up to the leader and go by. It'll be tough. We saw yesterday in the Xfinity Series race, Ty Gibbs with the faster car, not able, not able to pass Noah Gragson. This is a tough, tough job for this one car, a little bit quicker. That outside lane in the tunnel worked really well for him, allowed him to close in on Kyle. Now he went to the bottom, Kyle went to the middle. Little wiggle right there in the one car, trying to make that bottom work, not able to do it. Pretty good size gap there, Kyle Busch still leading. Well, the race stayed green, but not what the 12 team no. wanted to see there for Ryan Blaney. We were just talking about how he's in a must or he doesn't have a win yet this season. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's putting him in a compromising situation when it comes to the playoffs. Yeah, and we talk about points and stuff like that. He has a 68 point bumper heading into this race on Harvick to the playoff cutoff. But as we mentioned before, if someone if we have a new winner come in and win, he's out. And I can guarantee you he was frustrated with them with Denny Hamlin earlier. I think that yeah, Denny Hamlin. He was frustrated with Hamlin, not necessarily because of all that, but because of the stress of that. He's the last car in on points. He's the last car into the playoffs right now. He, like, anytime something goes wrong, it just kind of magnifies that in your head. Now you're getting upset, and you're like, man, I need to make up this spot, and you just took it away from me. So that frustration is now only going to build now because, obviously, now he's probably way behind the eight ball. I, I believe he's a lap down at this point. Uh, now it's just about just trying to make, make it to the end and hope you hope – Hope you make up some track position with a lucky dog or something like that. Well, and so much of that frustration is also a testament to the trends that we've seen this season with so many different winners. That's he's had a stellar year so far. Ryan Blaney he's finished fifth and sixth. Excuse me. He's finished top 10 in four of the last five races here at Pocono. He's got a win here at Pocono and he's led in 16 races this season. That's more races than any other driver. So he's up front. He's in contention every week, but he just can't get that win. Yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of opportunities for him to get that win uh, as in the weeks going on. You know, he's really good at road courses. He won the Charlotte Roval. He has a chance next week. You look at Michigan. He won there last year. We have Daytona. He won there last year. There's a lot of opportunity for him to get that win. Obviously, he's out of contention today, so he's going to hope. I know this sounds funny, but he wants one of these two guys to win today because they already have a win. If someone new wins, I, I keep saying it, it's probably annoying, but if somebody new wins, that's going to knock him out. He wants Ross or Kyle to win this race. He's a similar mindset to, as we were saying, Martin Truex Jr., who's sitting in a similar position. Mm -hmm. So let's see how stage three continues to shake down from Pocono. Under 48 laps to go. NASCAR Cup Series racing from Pocono. This telecast presented by Brez Tree. And now the gap about five car links. We want to take a look at the Ruoff Mortgage Keys to Victory Lane. Well, that final pit window opens in about seven laps. So it's one more stop, I think, is yes, but perhaps when. These guys have enough fuel to run into that fuel window. So the plan is when do you come to pit road and what advantage does that give your driver to rejoin on the racetrack? If we had a late restart, that's going to be a key moment leader the lead car the control car needs to be able to get down into turn one and clear the rest of the field can he do that can some of those guys in lane two or three make any aggressive moves to be able to take the lead and the gap getting even larger now between Kyle Busch and Ross Chastain seven tenths of a second separating the two Marty 
Hey, Rick, let's go through the field, starting with Kyle Busch. And for the first time all day long, you guys talked about it. Someone able to keep up with him. They've been kind of keeping him up today on where Ross Chastain is running. Kyle getting too free, but he's been able to spread that gap out over the end part of this run, Parker. And Marty, the car trying to chase him down. Is that one of Ross Chastain, who's been with a few cars this season, the last couple races, that can pass at places people say it's really hard to pass. I asked Ross about that earlier today, and he just looked at me and said, I don't know why we're able to pass, but we are. And right now, pretty happy that race car just getting a little tight in the dirty hair behind the 18, Marty. Parker in six laps. The window opens to make it to the end of the race. They're talking about Denny Hamlin coming in 10 laps. The car a little bit too tight for Hamlin right now. He said he's lost overall grip in turn three and just slides the tires on the exit, Parker. The car trying to chase him down is William Byron, that 24 who was pretty quick in practice and then spun off a turn three. And I asked William about that. And he said, you know, when we got to the second half of the season, I just find myself where I feel the car is too tight. So I had them loosen up and then we go too far. He said that's whole second half. I've just been searching to find that right balance. And right now he seems to have that right in the top five, Kim. Well, Parker Christopher Bell running in that fifth position and this team racing with a little less pressure after their win last weekend. Christopher radioed in a few laps ago to say it's loose on entry, tight in traffic. And when I talked to crew chief Adam Stevens this morning, he said they just want to maximize their day. That's where they need to clean things up before the playoffs. They haven't been able to do that recently. That's the goal here today as we move into the sixth position. Kevin Harvick, he is just too tight this last run. Maybe they overcorrected because he started off this race a little bit loose. Crew chief Rodney Childers said they feel like this isn't a must win to get in the playoffs. They think it's a must win two races, Parker. And for Eric Jones in the 43 currently running in 17th, he viewed this race as an opportunity and halfway through the race, it looked that way as a used strategy and the speed that 42 car to get into the lead. And then on this last restart, he restarted up in the fourth position, but fell out of the groove, fell all the way back to ninth and has worked his way slowly but surely back to seventh. They have the speed in that race car, but they're gonna need a caution or something else to go their way to get back to the front. And behind him is Daniel Suarez, who ran in the top five owner today, was really happy that race car Actually was a little loose in three, but liked the way it was setting up to make passes down to turn one. But as we got the second half of this race, he's been complaining how the handling has simply gone away on that 99 car, Marty. Well, we've seen Chase Elliott work his way back up to the top 10, but really struggle with the handle of this race car. He said turn one, landing, he's way too tight. That's where he's losing a lot of his time. And then Alan Gustafson said, hey, keep in mind, looks like this next stop, which should be coming up very shortly, will be under green. You see Chris Busher coming down here early 44 to go not sure they can make it to the very end on four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel so keeping in mind that green flag stop Kim that's going to be coming up in a bit and Marty you mentioned Chase Elliott just talking about those tight conditions his teammate Kyle Larson running in the 10th position having the same trouble He's saying guys I can't do anything it's way too tight in traffic dirty air is such a detriment to this car this team also with their crew chief Cliff Daniels back for the first time after a four race suspension I asked Cliff what he's feeling he said a little bit of relief but he said as a team exercise him being gone was great the team rose to the occasion and they feel like they're inching towards being playoff ready guys Larson back there in 10th but it's Kyle Busch with a 7 10 second lead over Ross Chastain you won't miss a thing We just saw that 17 of Chris Busher bring it down pit road at a surprising time. They took four tires and fuel, but we did hear them on the radio say they're unsure whether or not that's going to get them to the end of the race. So why pit now? I mean, really what they're hoping now is that they can leapfrog a couple cars, right? They're running. I don't know what position they're running in now, but maybe that moves them up one or two spots for the finish. Yeah, that's not going to matter. You know, come game time as we see Tyler Reddick hit pit road here for his four tires and fuel. But uh, really, it's just about maximizing, like I said earlier. Passing those cars, getting some valuable points to try and just close that buffer a little bit more. Um, obviously, pit stops. We still have one stop left to go. Really, this is Kyle Busch's race to lose. Um, he's been very fast all day. Ross Chastain has been able to challenge, but as you see right there, he's kind of been able to hold strong all day. So we still have plenty of racing to go here, but Ross Chastain all season long. The talk has been his aggression on the racetrack. He wants to win. He has two wins already and he wants more and he's willing to do whatever it takes. 
So as he trails this 18 car here, then what's the thought process for that one? Do you settle on second place and a good finish or as these laps tick down is a win? Is a win on the mind? Oh man, well, I mean, a win is definitely on the mind. You know, Ross Chastain, we know he's going to do what it takes. And as you see Tyler Reddick here fighting to stay on the lead lap <laughs> with Kyle Busch, that's only going to hold him up. Now that's going to put some pressure on Kyle Busch to hold off Ross Chastain. You mentioned, what's Ross Chastain going to do if he has the chance? We know he's already in the playoffs, but if he can get those wins, get those, because you got to think a win is extra, extra playoff points as well. And now that's going to shrink that gap a little bit just by that a little bit of hold up and you see right now Ross Chastain now tra trails Kyle Busch by about three car lengths heading down that front straightaway. Well, and we saw some lap traffic come into play when it came for a battle for the lead towards the end of the laps here in yesterday's races. I have to imagine we are going to see this continue here on the cup side. came off of pit road just in front of the 18 of Kyle Busch and slowed him down. Here comes Ross Chastain. Ross working really hard trying to get to the back bumper of this 18 car. Somehow, some way disrupt, disrupt the air for Kyle Busch. Make Kyle Busch have to get out of the gas. So he'll be, he'll be able to get up beside him. This I just don't see it happening though. The dirty air has been a little bit tricky. He's close though. I don't know, I like the line that Chastain's running. Boy, well, he's right behind him and you see he just can't get to the throttle because he's in that dirty weight. Kyle Busch knew the line. He just put a run and went right there. But Ross has made the tunnel turn work pretty well. That's been his strong point. Pit road really busy now as we see the nine of Chase Elliott. Marty. Boy, teams taking a risk here. Chase Elliott on the front end of this window. Alan Gustafson calling the pit road, 39 to go. When Kyle Busch got stuck behind the A car, once he came off pit road, they debated pitting then, and then Ben Bashor said, no, we can't, we're not in our window yet. Expect the 18 to go at least one more lap. You see, his teammate Martin Truex Jr. still on the racetrack as well, but no doubt that calls Kyle Busch time to Ross Chastain. All right, so decision time on the pit box as we see these guys leave pit road. Not all of them are gonna stay in the lead lap, because. Kyle Busch is going to have big momentum, so he's going to put a couple guys a lap down right here. So 18 wants to get to pit road with, in his window. That's going to make you have a little less anxiety. If you're the one at Chastain, you need to be thinking, can I peel off a lap earlier and try to flip him by having a quicker cycle than him and using those new tires? Parker. Right, and one of the first out of the top five to pit is William Byron in that 24 car. Just a little bit tight on the exit of the corners. It will be full time, four tires and filling it full of fuel here. What could be the final stop? Keeping her eye up on the top of the screen. Will the one peel off here as he comes out of turn three, or will the 18 come to pit road first? Yeah, you got to think they're in their window just because so many other cars are pitting. The one looks like they're all, oh, here comes the 18, and one's going to stay on the track. Kyle Busch gives up the lead, comes to pit road. Ross Chastain now in front here at Pocono. And the long run down pit road all the way to that number one stall in front of you, Marty. Well, you saw Kyle Busch kind of get down to pit road speed as quickly as he could. Also to hit pit road speed as well. Comes down here, 37 to go. Interesting move for Ross Chastain and Bill Surgeon to stay on the racetrack. Ben Bashor told Kyle Busch, you are waiting on me and the Jack. Got to get all the Snowco fuel in to make it to the end of the race, Kim. Christopher Bell on the bottom of their screen. Same story, waiting on the call from the crew chief to get that fuel cell full. He said the longer the run, the balance pretty good. Still a little free on entry for Christopher Bell. So now if the 18s come to pit road, Ross Chastain's going to have to counter. You can't give Kyle Busch two or three laps on new tires. Hard left-hand turn. Get all you can, but do not speed, Parker. Now it's up to the one crew. Can they leapfrog the 18 in this pit cycle? Right, immediately as Kyle Busch pit, they told Ross Chastain, hit this lap, and then as he was coming through turn three, they explained to him that they will be waiting on the fuel to get as full as they possibly can, and that they'll ease down the left side jack, as you see them on the right side, doing the right side tires. Now to the left side, and this is the key part. They want to get all the fuel in that race car, so they'll ease it down, and that's his cue now to go. 
10.1 is about 13 second stop for Kyle Busch, so we'll see where he rejoins. Long pit road, Ross Chastain basically in the middle. As he comes down towards pit road on the left-hand side, you see the 18 on the little pylon coming down at speed. I believe the 18 is going to carry the momentum past the one of Ross Chastain. There he comes into the picture. Got a little traffic in front of him with the... 41. Oh, I take that back. The momentum won't do it. Ross Chastain passes the 18 of Kyle Busch on the pit cycle. That is teamwork at its finest, and Kyle Busch right now is frustrated. Well, Kyle Busch's first lap back on the racetrack was an 85.50. The one car stayed on the racetrack and run an 84.70. So staying on the track and be able to run that quick lap allowed him to be able to leapfrog instead of the usual pit early, staying out and being quick has helped this one car leapfrog. All I can figure, and we're gonna go back and look at it, you know, the 18, I had a hard time picking him out of those cars. He must have been in traffic. So we're gonna go back and find that one blending on pit road to try to get more details to this answer. But all we know right now is for cars that can make it to the finish, that's important because they aren't leading the race. Hamlin, Wallace, McDowell, they're up front. Ross Chastain is the first car on the racetrack with enough Sunoco fuel to run the next 35 laps. And just to let you know, the 24 came to pit road and had an equipment interference penalty while on pit road. That's another thing you cannot do. As the 11 now has come to pit road. So oh, Hamlin, no one, they spin. Coming to pit road, Chris Buescher, right front tires down. No caution, no caution has come out yet. He stays on the bottom of the racetrack. So Steve, the 18 car pits and comes back around in his 85 second lap. The one car in 83 second lap. So there's two seconds there somewhere, Marty. Let's see where Denny Hamlin cycles out in this. Came down pit road in third. Chris Gabart leading him out two laps longer. Oh, the can fell. I think it did stay in the pit box though, so that should be a legal stop, Steve. A lot of strategies right here because people are concerned the yellows are going to come out. That's why it's gotten busier on pit road. It's even a little hectic up here in the booth trying to figure <laughs> out where everybody's at. I can tell you that Chastain and Kyle Busch, we should also look at their times on pit road just to see, you know, where all the point was. You keep talking about their laps on the racetrack, and yeah, you're absolutely right, Junior, right? There's two seconds to be found. Well, here you go. Here's a second and a half of it right here. Ross Chastain. Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch rolls pit road, great speed. But pit crew, two and a half seconds slower than the one of Chastain. Simple math right there. Ross Chastain finds almost a second and a half just in their pit stops. And the 23 of Bubba Wallace coming onto pit road. Now, the question I would pose to you is, does Ross Chastain have enough fuel in the car now? That quick of a stop. Well, I'm sure they know, but they're not going to tell us. To your point, you're going to have a little nerves if you somehow did it in 10 seconds and it took Kyle Busch 13 seconds. So there you go. Now Chastain cycled to the leader. Kyle Busch in second. Hamlin right there in third. Gibbs, I mean, Hamlin has brought himself right back into the mix with this pit cycle. Well, now we got a battle on the racetrack, but all year long, Ross Chastain's team has gotten it done. They have been the fastest on average speed. They ranked number one. Once again, got it, made it happen. Here's a spin with Chris Buescher. Once again, turn three. And I applaud NASCAR for not throwing a caution in that situation. Chris Buescher was able to straighten it back out, got down to the apron, was able to get around the racetrack. No caution comes out. They stay racing. 33 laps to go. And now it's Chastain, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, the top three. Yeah, you see a few names, Gibbs, Custer, Gilliland, uh, Ware, you know, with, with in the mid-90s. They all have to come to pit road. So 18's closed the gap just a little bit. And now they got company. This 11 car looks pretty good, guys, down the inside of the 18. Denny trying to find a way to get alongside his teammate. That last lap by about a tenth and a half faster for Chastain over these two guys. Ross Chastain, I think, has surprised numerous people in 2022 with getting his first win and then his second and is being so dominant. Uh, the top 10 finishes this year for actually the whole team, Trackhouse team with Suarez included, they have been incredible. And now you have a battle behind Ross Chastain yeah. for that second spot. Here comes Hamlin. Kyle Busch had trouble off of turn three right there. Lost a lot of momentum. And he's gonna be able to get that position. 
So Hamlin takes second away from Kyle Busch. And Kyle Busch falls back to that third spot. And remember the comment from Kyle Busch in New Hampshire last week. He said, hey, make a note. We are the slowest Gibbs car here today. They're not the slowest Gibbs car, but late in the race to have your teammate pass you when you've been leading is exceptionally frustrating. All right, the leaders have made their final, what's expected to be the final pit stop. So what can we expect then to see as these laps tick down? Well, the biggest question right now is, obviously Ross Chastain had a lightning fast pit stop, 10 seconds there. Do they have enough fuel to make it to the end? As the broadcast mentioned, they're not gonna say that they don't. They're not gonna say, hey, you know, they're not gonna communicate it over the main channel. Cause I know every team is wondering, <laughs> every team is wondering, Kyle Busch, he's just suddenly out of nowhere. He's kind of struggling a little bit. He just fell behind mm -hmm. the 11 car here running third. This is going to play majorly into Ross Chastain's hands as this race goes on. He has a track position. He has a buffer to what, what all race long has been the rocket ship on track, which is that 18. But the biggest heel in all of this, do we have a yellow? We saw the 17 spin. Somehow we didn't have a yellow, which was a, honestly a pretty wild call, pretty good call. But it kept the race going. It, it, it kept this battle going. Now, will we see that again with how edgy these race cars have been I don't know if we'll make it to the end without a yellow and what would that do then for pit strategy would anyone <laughs> elect to come in and, and make any changes there or is again track position is kind of the name of the game here? it's a little bit of both right you know where do you want to make that sacrifice do you want to sacrifice track position for handling or do you want to track or do you want to sacrifice handling for track position if you're one of those guys running outside the top 10 top 15 might as, well, might as well stay out or pit for two tires. You know, do a little bit of a crazy strategy to try and leapfrog a couple guys because there's no beating these three. I mean, I, I said earlier there's no beating Kyle Busch, and right now it's happening. But these three have kind of established themselves as the guys to beat, and I think this is going to be who – it's going to be between one of these three. Say if it goes green, it's going to be between one of these three for the win. Well, interestingly enough, if you caught the Xfinity race yesterday, we saw Noah Gregson, who ultimately was the winner. He sacrificed track position mm -hmm. for tires there on the final pit stop. And again, it worked out in his favor. So I know we're working with an entirely different <laughs> animal here, but this is what these guys are seeing this weekend. So I'll be interested to see if we do get another caution to your point, what we do there. But right now, things are things are looking green on the track. Yeah, I mean, like I said, everything's clean and green. Everybody's wide open. Everybody's spread out. There's no real close side-by-side -side battles right now. I mean, we don't know further back in the pack or anything, but clearly it's kind of just established itself as, all right, this is the run to the end. This is, this is what's going to take us to the checkered flag. And let's see which teams make their bet here. Well, and both JGR teammates up there competing. I did mention earlier, seven of the last nine races at Pocono have been won by JGR. But from a series standpoint, the final lead change has come in the final 10 laps, 13 of the 20 races this year. So mm. trends continue. <laughs> we have not seen our final lead change of the day. Let's send it back to Pocono and see how stage three ends up today. Pocono wins looking for number seven. He's tied for the most all time with Jeff Gordon, but that seventh could be a little more difficult if he has enough fuel listening to the radio. We did not get all the fuel that we needed given the scenario. I think we're about two and a half laps short. You can start saving. No brake is your first scenario. So you're lifting such that there's no brake. Okay, so the 1, the 11, the 18, very important. All three of them have gone through a pit cycle. The 11 of Denny Hamlin, the fastest pit stop at 10.1 seconds. Right side great, left side great. The one time you want to have a little slow tire exchange is right here. Watch the fuel man. Great timing. Can 1, can 2. He comes right back in. He's plugged in, but he knows he's short. Watch how quick this left side is. It almost drags the can out, as Marty mentioned earlier. Lucky break. Now here's the one. 11.6 seconds, one and a half seconds slower. So you get more fuel, the cans are plugged in. He comes right back, plugs in, left side goes on. They don't look at fuel at all, but the head, oh, I love the fuel, man. Big head nod, we're for sure doing it. Now the 18, right side, little bobble on the right rear. So it is a little slower on tires. When you get to the left side, they'll look at much more time. This is a 13.1 second pit stop. The fuel man is plugged in for sure. They're waiting, waiting, waiting. Didn't get that head nod, right? So whether 
the plug wasn't perfect. The flow, like, they all don't flow the same. It's very tough to plug that can in with the car jacked up. If it's tipped a little bit, it's not as efficient. Nice job by the jack man not being short. But Marty, now the 18, third on the racetrack. Yeah, Steve, we saw the timing on pit road. Kyle Busch staying longer on pit road was not a problem with the stop. So you got to wonder if that's the penalty for Kyle Busch leading that entire run before that. Coming to pit road, burning a lot more fuel. So they had to wait on the fuel to make sure it was completely full to make it to the end. For the Denny Hamlin situation, two and a half laps may not sound like a lot, but that's almost six and a half miles that Denny Hamlin is short on fuel. So, Steve, number one, what can they do to make that better? To Hamlin make it to the end of the race? But really, it's on Jeff and Junior, right, as a driver. You heard Chris Gabehart said, no brakes. What he means, stay off the brakes. That'll help your fuel mileage. But Denny Hamlin in the three laps since that radio transmission has been the fastest for two of those three laps. I'm not sure the driver of the 11 is listening very much right now. No brakes and limit your shifts. Stay in high gear. That's the two things that lowers the RPM. Basically, like lifting off the brake pedal does not affect the fuel, <laughs> fuel mileage. But what he's saying is back off early enough to where you don't need brakes to slow the car down. All right. So if you're driving the car normally, you drive deep into the corner, slow the car down with the brake pedal. He wants you to lift early enough to where you don't need to use any brakes to make the corner, and that'll be lifting early enough to save him the fuel he needs. There's 24 laps, well, just under 24 laps to go in this race. Chastain out in front by eight tenths of a second over Denny Hamlin, Marty. And it's amazing with this new technology, Rick. Chris Gabehart live coaching Denny Hamlin. Jeff, you didn't have this when you were a driver saying, OK, the way you rolled through the tunnel turn last time, I like that. Same lift point this time. Same thing through turn three, kind of coaching him through, lifting it up to get those two and a half laps back. Well, Chris Gabehart, he has an advantage of having live data. So he knows how much fuel that 11 car is burning. And he knows, oh, Blaney, oh. A huge hit for Ryan Blaney. Into the wall, caution comes it out. out. Be all right. Once again, a spin off of turn three. And a big hit on that inside wall. AMR safety crew speeding to him now. It's not been a good day for Penske. Cindric early in the race had a spin, had damage. Now Blaney, he had a he had a spin earlier. Now he spun and had big damage. See some movement there. He's trying to mess with the shifter. Let's take another look at what happened. Gets high up off the corner, loses the back. Oh, almost had it saved. Kind of slow. Huh? Finally comes around, but that impact guy is so hard in that inside wall. He just climbed out of the car. The crowd here, an ovation for Ryan. Take another look. Kyle Bush had just come through the front stretch, and Blaney off of three which we've seen so many times already this weekend that's amazing I don't know that I've ever seen this many wrecks off of turn three at this racetrack so the the profile of the tire is part of this I know there's a lot of variables with this race car that are different but that low profile tire just the drivers have lost the ability to understand when grip is going away that sidewall being taller would give you a lot of forgiveness and it would deflect and the car would slide and you would have more room or a bigger box to catch the car. Now with a low profile tire, when the, car, when the, car, when the tire begins to slip, it is beyond a, a, a lot of these guys' ability to, to gather it back up. And also with the lack of side force, the flatter you know, quarter panels that we used to have on the older cars, that would almost straighten you out. That wind, it would like, like a big sail and almost try to steer you back straight. And that is gone as well. So when these cars do come around, they, they come around a lot quicker. So it's much tougher for these guys this, this year to try to save these cars. And we, we want them to be challenged. We want it to be hard to do. And it's definitely been tough even for some of the veterans. 
Yeah, and even as, even before the car slips, you know, them not actually knowing where uh, the car is as far as being loose. This is big implications right here. So we've talked about Blaney and Truex having a battle to make these playoffs. You know, this is not going to help Blaney. If Truex can get in front of him, and then if you were to get another winner, then that allows Truex to be that last guy in. So we'll see. We've seen how many races, how many times these playoffs have been determined by one point. Uh, we'll see how big of an issue this is for Blaney moving into the next few races. 13 stage points earned by Blaney today is going to help him a little bit. But he's going to drop all the way back, probably all, almost to 34th. As far as a finishing position for Blaney after uh, everyone's able to get by. We see work being done on pit road now. Austin Dillon, three team on pit road. Noit Gregson's there as well. Yeah, it's, you know, about, let's see, 15th on back, a handful of guys have pitted. This is really a fresh tire call, and probably to double check you're good on fuel, we heard that the 11 was close, so he's going to use this yellow to save fuel. But if you're any of these guys, you're trying to make a day out of something, you have a little extra fuel case, we can get some green-white checkers. I mean, that's two and a half miles every extra lap we have. So, listen, that wreck from Ryan Blaney was unbelievable, but I think it's worth a tip of the hat to Pocono Raceway and the decision to extend pit lane. Back in 2015, we have been coming here for a long time, and twice on the same weekend, this is Jeff Burton, spins off turn four, just misses the barrels, and he is pretty far down pit lane when he makes contact. This is practice. You see the guy standing on pit lane. Then Casey Kane in the race. I mean, he's four pit stalls down when he, I mean, it's almost the same tire tracks as Jeff. Look at these pit helmets, over pit boxes, people diving out of the way. I mean, look at everyone scamper. Pocono Raceway comes in and they extend that wall between pit road, right? So this whole section right here has been extended. Like there's new, it's about 100 to 150 feet of new wall. And if we go back and look at that Ryan Blaney hit, think about that restart zone decal. He hits in the first Geico. So, I mean, 50, 75 feet down pit lane, a huge hit. It was great to see Blaney get out, but so thankful for both Ryan and everyone on pit road. The pit wall is not like that other wall. You don't want a car hitting that at speed. There are pit crew members, so a big adjustment here from Pocono that's unfortunately been tested multiple times this weekend with all the trouble off turn three. Yeah, and Ryan Blaney had complained about that turn three all race long. Remember the report I gave? He said he had nothing to lean on in turn three, just wrecking loose. So we saw inevitably what happened to him in that number 12 car after just having nothing to do with turn three. Twenty laps to go here at Pocono while we have a moment. A huge weekend coming up next week at Indianapolis. A double header, Rickyard weekend, IndyCar and NASCAR. IndyCar on Saturday, NASCAR on Sunday. Both will be on NBC and Peacock. And earlier today at Iowa, a double header at Iowa for IndyCar. And it is Padua Ward winning today and those of you NASCAR fans really great weekend for Jimmy Johnson as well seventh yesterday and a career best fifth place finish today but Pato Award the one celebrating at the end of today's race in Iowa Again, looking forward to that big weekend next weekend yeah I was up in Indianapolis for qualifying for the 500 this year and got to have a couple conversations with Pato just a great character I mean it's uh, talented behind the wheel but a fun guy to talk to always smiling Okay, Marty, you're standing by with Gabe Hart. This caution, I'm guessing, is helping the fuel mileage. Yeah, the story before this is how Denny Hamlin was two and a half laps short. I walked up to the pit box, told Chris Gabe Hart, Merry Christmas. So I know you needed this caution, but is this caution enough to get you to the end, Chris? Well, we were saving quite a bit there and, and kind of staying with Ross and running them down. Um, I think the caution will certainly buy us what we need, but we probably got a little bit more magic trick left to go. But cautions bleak, breed cautions, and the 11's here to win, and I think we're in a good spot to do it. Yeah, you told me playoff points are bust this morning, so that means winning, right? So how about handling-wise, does he have enough car to be able to get by the one and hold off Kyle Busch? I think so. Um, we'll see how the race plays out. There you go, Chris Gabehart needed this caution. He got it. Also, Tyler Reddick sitting in the sixth position as well. They were three laps short, Rick, and this caution gets them where they need as well to make it to the end of the race. 
Yeah, remember, he's got Denny Hamlin behind the wheel. Six wins tied with Jeff Gordon as the most here at Pocono. But he will have a challenge. Kyle Busch, four wins at this racetrack as they get ready to choose. This will be important for this restart. Who do you want behind you? Who do you want helping you? Who can you trust to stay there and push you all the way down into turn one? Hamlin went to the bottom. I like that call, but it's a little bit risky. If you get hung up down there, they can pile up on you on the outside. I think that's a, a race winning move, but at the same time, it's a little bit of a risky move. We saw Chastain do it earlier and it worked well for him. And you got the four car of Harvick and what he feels like is a must win, not only one race, but two races. He's in the row behind you. Yeah, we just saw uh, Ryan Blaney with a big wreck. Parker Fickerman's with him. Right, just released from the infield care center, Ryan Blaney, that hard hit off a of turn three. What happened there? Yeah, it's just got loose. Um, it's one of those things you get loose off three and think you can save it and can't. And, and uh, I just I just couldn't save it. So, um, yeah, gosh, I hate it for everybody on the 12 group. We just finally got the car decent and then we were running, you know, top five there and, and uh, had a flat tire and had to come in and then just tried too hard and, and stepped away from me. So. I uh, hate it for Menards and Ford and everybody that's on uh, my mistake, but um, go out again next week. Glad to see you're okay. All right, thank you. As always seems to happen in this sport, the two drivers that are mad at each other always seem to find themselves on the racetrack. Pre-race and everything else. Well, here they are racing each other. Well, here's some of the reasons Denny Hamlin's been so upset. Chastain in the back of him at Gateway, then in Atlanta. Chastain drives up the racetrack and gets into the left rear quarter panel. Spins Hamlin out. Hamlin's been very clear about his frustrations. Yeah, how many times have we seen Kevin Harvick with the fastest car be trapped behind someone else and run second at Pocono? That's happened a lot in his career, but here he is. What's he willing to do? How aggressive is he willing to be on this restart to Try to put himself in position. Does he think he has a car that can win? 18 laps to go. We're about to find out. Pace car has made its way onto pit road. Back in the hands now. Of Ross Chastain on the outside. Green flag back in the air. Very tight in the first six cars. Chastain up the racetrack. Here comes the 11. They lean on each other a little bit. Chastain oh! into the wall. Hard into the wall. He goes around. He'll hit the inside wall as well. Caution has come out. Big damage to the four car of Harvick. He came across. The, the one car came across the nose of the four. And he has severe damage. Well, we talked about it. C. Chastain drives in the corner deep, gets up the racetrack. Hamlin immediately up the racetrack, pushes Chastain out of the line and into the wall. Here he is. Look how high Hamlin is. Remember, he is a car on the bottom, and he just ran Chastain up the racetrack, and then oh, the trouble ensued behind him. Tristan Bell hits the wall as well. We see that in the top corner of the screen, a 20 car. Yeah, Hamlin, you, know, you might want to know, is that retaliation? That's just Hamlin saying, look, I'm not giving you any room. You haven't given me any room. This is a race for the win. You know, if whatever happens, happens. I'm going to go up the racetrack. He didn't intentionally wreck him, but he sure ran him out of the groove. Didn't know what was going to happen at that point, but got him completely out of the line. Oh, yeah, trying to get there. Outside, oh, outside, outside, outside. outside. Low, 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 low. At the wrong time again. Damn. Yeah, Harvick's got to be extremely frustrated. Well, Steve, you've got another talking point on Motor Mouse on Monday and Wednesday at 6 o'clock. I'm going to tell the producer to leave the format open because I think we're going to have a whole lot of phone calls. Can't wait. Call in. Give us your opinion. Hamlin, Chastain, we've seen it all year. Another contact here at Pocono. Call in and talk to us at Motor Mouse. And Denny said that he would handle it. And I believe he just did. Everybody was wondering if, he, if it was all talk. And here we are today. It looks like it wasn't. And you wonder, Hamlin picked the bottom. You wondered all along if he decided, I'm going to the second or third lane, or whatever happens here happens. Remember, Hamlin's sitting there with two wins. He's pretty, he's safe going into the playoffs. And, you know, honestly, if you're mad at somebody, you're going to retaliate, 
it, it's silly to do that racing for 18th. If you can move a guy out of the way for a win in retaliation, that's how you should do it because a retaliation should be good for you, not bad for him. You know, make it work for you. And Denny Hamlin just said, hey, man, this is my line, my race. I'm going to take it. So Hamlin now the leader at Pocono with Kyle Busch in the second position. We'll find out where they will restart as far as what lines they choose. Kyle Busch has been phenomenal on restarts as well. So if Kyle Busch, say Hamlin takes the high line, which we would expect, Kyle Busch takes the low line. Kyle Busch has been as good, and you called him Ron Hornaday-esque, as anyone on restarts. Could he get in front of Hamlin on this restart? Well, it's a different situation. Racing your teammate, you take some risks, but not the same risk that he just took with Ross Chastain. And I think, you know, Kyle Busch got to feel pretty good about his restarts today, but I don't even know if he has the pace. I mean, that car really wasn't handling good up to this point in this, fight, in this last run as the four car. The Busch Beer crew starts to try to put this thing back together. And that thing took a heck of a hit. It looks like they feel like he's going to be able to get out there and finish. Yeah, I'm surprised as well. It was a hard lick. Yeah, I thought the radiator or yeah. something would be busted in this thing, but they're putting the tape on it. These things are tough. Uh, left side of the hood, it helped too. And Steve probably on the clock. A part oh, of for the sure. They're part of this accident. So they have six minutes. Six minutes seems short, but I'm going to tell you, sitting on pit road, it's longer than you think as long as you stay ahead of it. What you don't want to do is take three and a half minutes coming up with a plan and then try to execute it in two and a half. And these teams have become very, very versed on this DVP. Uh, when it first came out, there was some panic. It used to be five minutes. They've extended it to six. I thought that was a good adjustment. I mean, the idea is we don't want a bunch of wrecked race cars riding around, but a guy like the four car, you don't want to take him out of the race if tape can fix it. All right, let's check in with KP on the Peacock pit box. What do you think about the 11 and 1? Listen, I thought the, the 11's move was an old school move. I'm going to give you just enough racetrack to wreck yourself. And, and it was perfect. I mean, that's how you get back at somebody. We hear these guys jump out of cars a lot of times and say, this guy's not going to do this to me. This guy's not going to do that. Denny didn't do anything. Denny held his ground. He eased up the racetrack. Ross kept it there. Ross had the option of ro to roll out of it at some point in time and save his car and lose some positions. But he stuck it up in there, too. So, hey, listen, it's going to be interesting to see what Ross's comments are on this. He's been on the other side of this argument for a while. Let's see what it feels like to be on this side. There was Ross climbing out of the one. I, think, I do think that, you know, Kyle brings up a good point. But, you know, what is his reaction? What does he say? I, mean, I could take two arguments of this. I could, I could say it's awful for Ross Chastain, but if you thought that you were absolutely going to get wrecked by Denny Hamlin, do you say, man, I hate that it happened, but maybe I'm happy now and not the playoffs? I mean, that would take... A, maybe a bigger man than me to be quite that optimistic, but that might be how Ross looks at it. We'll have to wait and talk to him. It's going to be fascinating to get his thoughts on this. Get a lot of damage up into the wall coming out of turn one. Marty. Boy, Joe Gibbs Racing sitting one, two, four right now. Ben Bayshore, crew chief for Kyle Busch, who's led the most laps today. So does this caution help or hurt you? I think it helps. Uh, we, we've been firing off pretty tight on, on stickers. Uh, the cycle tires have been a little bit freer for us, and we were tight there before the uh, that first caution came out. So hopefully this plays in our handling um, characteristics that we're fighting right now, and then having a front row restart and Kyle Busch up there. Um, hopefully we can get it done. How dramatically has the car's handling changed, and also now different restart because your teammates up there with you fighting for the win? Yeah, we haven't had to make too many adjustments today. It was, you know, it's a little tight in spots, a little free, you know, other sets of tires. It, we're just kind of back and forth right now. Um, so we'll see where it goes here at the end. Ben, all the talk that's been going on off the track with this race team, how badly could you use a win right now? Yeah, I mean, just, just for this team in general, we, we've had, you know, five, six bad weeks here of just finishes that weren't up to uh, what we're expecting, you know, so just trying to get back on track here. Steve, I think I agree with what Kyle Busch said before the race. Man, a win, that might cure everything. And all that contract talk, who knows, it might go away if Kyle pulls in victory lane today. We talked about this in the pre-race. Me, Marty, Kyle Petty, Jeff, you and I both picked the 18. But there's a lot of conversation about Ty Gibbs being in the field. He's currently sitting 15th. So, you know, this contract negotiation is, is going to continue to be leading in the media. 
uh, until we have some resolution. And I believe that if you're the 18, forget the business side, the only way you get leverage, I mean, his resume is his resume, 60 wins, two championships. Like, it's impressive. But this year, his only win has been at the dirt track, which was contact between Redick uh, and yeah, he was running third and Briscoe. When, yeah, yeah, when the two guys got together. So he didn't really, I mean, that wasn't a I mean, win he that he dominated. Correct. So to have a dominant win would be a big deal. And as we come to the choose, what's everybody going to do? 18 chooses the bottom. He's going to choose to line up on the front row. That puts Chase Elliott second on the outside. Driver's thoughts, you like 18 taking the bottom? Well, it shows me that he's not here to help his teammate. He's here to go down there into turn one and try to make it work and work for himself. Hopefully he gets the help from behind that he needs. He's got Tyler... Reddick back there that was in fifth position. Now he's going to move up to third on the inside line in that eight car. Can we get 13 laps in before the possible weather gets here? That is now becoming a little bit of an issue as I look over to my left and off of turn three, it's looking a little darker back there, maybe even a little precipitation. I didn't think we we're going to get any rain, guys, but there might be another issue. Yeah, lightning. That's right. That lightning, that yeah. pesky lightning. There's actually... I mean, there's there's new programs down here. People trying to predict lightning. Good luck with that. But that's what could stop the race. Safety of the fans, safety yeah. of the competitors. So lightning would be enough. So the urgency has to be ramping up for the drivers. Do you think the crew chiefs are letting the drivers know about the weather? Or then is crew chiefs thinking about that lightning, a possible early end or stoppage to this race? I think at 14 to go, I'm not too worried about it at this point. Let's just get through this restart. But if we have another one, I'm going to say, okay, this may be the last. You know, I would hope your driver's thinking with 14 to go, this may already be the last restart. You know, I, I'm not sure you can start giving. Yeah, I, I think that you're talking about the crew chiefs, you know, the drivers can see it. So you'll see Kevin Harvick. This has always happened here for some reason. The weather always seems to come from this side. So as soon as he makes this left, he's going to see it get darker on the left side and He's like immediately thinking to see the darker clouds, the higher clouds. He's already thinking, uh oh, weather's coming. It always happens at this racetrack from this direction, it seems. I want to race here and it only rained in turn two. I mean, I just needed one corner to get wet. <laughs> yeah, they're driving right to the west right now where all of these storms are coming from. And you see it's dark back there over the trees, but we'll see if we can get 13 laps in before it gets here. The pace car. We'll move out of the way. Hamlin on the outside. Kyle Busch on the inside. A sprint to the finish. Great push on that outside line from Chase Elliott. Now the inside's battling back. And he's going to clear down into one side by side for second place. Chase trying to stay on the outside of this 18 car. He's not going to be able to do it. Kyle rolled right up behind the 11 as they come off of one. Oh, man, almost contact back there with the 20 and the 8. Christopher Bell getting around this 8 car ready. Here comes Suarez as well in the 99. Reddick powers around the outside. Look at that move. What a drive. Has momentum now as he closes the gap between himself and the nine of Chase Elliott looking for third now. Reddick is unreal, man. That win gave him so much confidence. Now 12 to go. Can Kyle Busch chase down this 11 car? Denny and his guys think he's got to be good on fuel. He's going to put the hammer down. No more saving. And right now, if you're Kyle Busch, you just got to run the line that you think you're the best in evaluate where the where the 11 is good and where he's not and then you're going to have to start going where he isn't but until you run a few laps you can't get into that rhythm to understand what that driver in front of you is doing on well, this set of tires that 18, 18 car just hasn't been quite as fast as he's been most of the day but he draws in there through the tunnel turn trying to stay close to this 11 car what does he do down here in this corner with the resin there's so many different options for these guys both running the high side. While these two are separated by three cars, you see the other two back here. Reddick, a little wiggle there as Christopher Bell gets to his inside. Yeah, Reddick comes off the wall, wow. tries a side draft. This is they, what, that's so interesting to me, how they know <laughs> look like how to get back in the line there. there. Yeah, it looks like planes in formation. Able to stay off each other and race hard. These now guys, raced, they raced each other a lot in the Xfinity Series. A lot of trust here. 
Reddick had the run, but he's going to get a little help from the 99. Suarez right behind the eight that pushes him ahead. And now the 99 of Suarez going by on the outside. And how about behind them? Michael McDowell continue to impress. Comes out of thin air, that 34 car. Late in these races for a top 10 finish. And just moments ago, Ross Chastain out of the infield care center. Parker was with him. Ross Chastain checked and released from the infield care center after that incident with Denny Hamlin at the front of the field. What happened there from your point of view? Oh, Parker, I think that's something that's been owed to me for a few months now. So um, I'm proud of the effort by Trackhouse and everybody on this Worldwide Express car. It's, it's week in and week out. We keep bringing fast Chevy Camaros and everybody Advent Health, the Moose and Jockey to uh, to keep bringing bullets like that and keep bringing fast cars. Uh, it's a testament to, to GM and, and everybody at, at Chevrolet. So. Um, yeah, it's uh, another fast one, and uh, we'll be back at Indy. Do you feel like that was retaliation from him? I I've I've been owed that and probably some more for a few months now. So, um, yeah. Fine. Is the score settled? I don't know. <laughs> I'd say the laugh is worth a thousand words there from Ross Chastain. Well, look, Ross Chastain owned up to the mistakes he's made. And you know what? I, I, I The score is settled. Like, it should be over, move on. Then he's got, you know, then he got the last word there. It's time to move on and go racing. That was some great racing with Suarez and Christopher Bell there. We were watching while that interview was going on. Yeah, and while that interview was going on, the turn one all the way up to turn two was still in sunlight. That is now gone. So the cloud's getting closer. Truex and Larson here for eighth place. Coming up on eight laps to go as Larson able to get by Martin Trex Jr. Hamlin, Bush, Elliott, Reddick, Suarez, the top five. We're plenty good on fuel in my opinion, but certainly I'll take any you'll give me. <laughs> I like that one. We're good, but if you can save me some. I hate to tell Chris Gabehart that, but his opinion is the only one that matters if I'm Denny Hamlin. You're the guy with all the numbers. I like that radio. Eight laps to go. Does he have enough fuel? Will they outrun the weather? Hamlin now separating himself from Kyle Busch by eight tenths of a second. Hamlin trying to separate himself from Hall of Famer Jeff Gordon as well. Right now tied for the most wins ever here at Pocono. Great battle Big right run here. There. Yeah, great battle right here between the 24 and the 6. Just ahead of these guys in 15th place, the 45 of Ty Gibbs has done a great job all day long, just picking up a little pace as we go. Watching his lap times. Half tenth here, two tenths there, three tenths there. Now he's running competitive he's laps. By the car length. Seven to go. Running competitive laps, looking at a top 15 finish in his very first start. I never would have thought that possible this morning. Yeah, Ty and that and that wreck with Ross Chastain, he restarted about 21st, 22nd, but he was able to get through that wreck and picked up five or six spots. But he has been able to maintain those spots. Good job by Ty. Yeah, incredible day. You know the expectations. Everyone talked about get to the end of the race, which she still has seven laps to go. But you remember back to Bubba, who subbed for Eric Almirola right here, finished 26th in his first ever start in a Cup Series race. And now we see Ty Gibbs running in the top 15. And the other thing this does is the conversation about when to move people up, right? That's the conversation. When's too young, right? But this car has kind of changed the game a little bit. Don't you want a young driver learning how to drive this car? Even if he struggles for a year or so, it would be that much smarter. Running an Xfinity car doesn't gain you as much as you used to. And surprisingly, as good as Ty Gibbs is running and as good right now as Kyle Busch is running, it could be a bad thing for Ky Kyle Busch, as good as the 19-year-old is running in the 45 car right now. We talked what a win would do for Kyle Busch in the negotiations, but you ask yourself, Ty Gibbs, if he can bring this home in the top 15, is that just the shove that Coach Gibbs and Corey Gibbs and the other Dave Alpern, the, the executives at Joe Gibbs Racing, does that encourage them to say, you know what, we know what we're losing in Kyle Busch. That's not in question. Maybe their hesitation was, what are we getting in Ty Gibbs? What would that look like? And this was a pretty good dress rehearsal to answer some of those questions. Now coming up on five laps to go. Kyle Busch has 
Looked like Denny was driving away, but now Kyle Busch has found a way to kind of break even with him. Yeah, you wonder if Denny has enough confidence in his pace. Maybe he is giving a little bit back in that, in that fuel savings. Lifting just a car length early. Taking care of his tires and balance. Reddick a little loose off turn four here. Woo. How did he save it? Seen so many guys have trouble off of there. That's talent. Guy has a bunch of it. Yeah, man, get signed 18 Pilot. months out. That's why, right? That's what they're seeing. Yep. There's McDowell in front of reigning series champion Kyle Larson. Incredible run from, from Michael, but front row. That's a great run for this team, and they've been able to do it a lot with him this year. This new cars really even the playing field for everybody involved, and he's probably going to have to give this position right here. Settle back into eighth place. Larson takes seventh, McDowell back to eighth. Hamlin, eight tenths of a second, still over Kyle Busch, less than 10 miles still to be raced here at Pocono. We mentioned Denny Hamlin trying to separate himself from the Hall of Famer Jeff Gordon. This would be win seven if he can hang on. And remember, as we were talking about Ty Gibbs and what an amazing run it is for his first start, the rookie potentially finishing in the top 15. It was Denny Hamlin's rookie season when he won his first two races here, swept that year as a rookie at Pocono. I know Denny saved a lot of fuel, but man, these lap times with the temperature down and the track temp down, running some pretty quick laps here, 54 flat, 54 20 for a long duration. Marty, what you got? With Kyle Busch is coming, but Denny Hamlin facing what could be his third win of the season. Clean races inside the 11 camp are called green races. Denny told me a few weeks ago, we've had very few green races so far this year. And you think about their season, yes, this would be win number three, but they were 20th and below in points for much of this year. Gabart, in fact, Chris Gabart, his crew chief, said at one point, we're the most dangerous 20th place team in NASCAR history. Here they are, maybe getting their third win, and that would put them with 12 playoff points plus the five they would get. That would make 17 playoff points, and all of a sudden, Denny Hamlin would be the number two seed in the playoffs, Rick. Unbelievable how wild their year has been. All you gotta do is let back car length. I'll take lift and coast. We're plenty happy though. Don't get yourself in trouble. Let's don't get him this trophy just yet. Remember, <laughs> Kyle Larson drove into turn three on the last lap last year and blew a left front tire. It's never over. Yeah, it's a long ways around this racetrack. So many things can happen, and we have seen quite a few things already happen this weekend. Single cars spinning coming off of turn three. Got to give a lot of credit to Gabe Hart and his whole team, though. They have improved this car throughout the race. I don't think he had this kind of pace early in the day. It's one lap to go. White flag, one more. Presented one more, by no Credit run. One Bank. Back. Two and a half miles in front of Denny Hamlet. Does he have enough gas? They think he does. Three thousand foot long back straight away, heading toward a tunnel turn. Comfortable lead. He's through the tunnel turn. Now one more turn. No gain. And half of that long straightaway until he sees the checkered flag. It would be his third win of the 2022 season, but more importantly. It would be career win number 49, tying him with Tony Stewart. He's going to win at Pocono again. Great job, team. Good work. Way to go, guys. Chris, Sam, Ryan, way to make up for this strategy. That's fucking awesome. Had some contact with the wall off turn two. Very first lap of the race. Worried about the race car. Thought he'd hurt the car. Gabe Hart calms him down. They get back to work. 
all types of strategies. Well, they spun. I mean, he's coming off of two, he spins, and he's still able to do what they do. A lot happening today for this 11 team. But Denny Hamlin, man, he has such an incredible record here. Track seems to fit him well. Winning his driver ever at Pocono. Now he has separated himself. A Hall of Fame career. And right now. We thank you for these men and the way they work together. Thank you for all of this. We give you the glory in the name of God. Hey, 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 the only thing missing from an incredible career for Denny Hamlin is a championship. And with three wins, He's closing in on being the favorite again. All the way down the front stretch. Denny Hamlin will go to recognize the fans here. starts. This checkered flag moment brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The second longest straightaway in NASCAR. And Denny Hamlin's going to try to do a burnout over most of it. Consistent start to the 22 season for Denny Hamlin. He got wins, but he had DNFs. He had wins, but he had poor finishes. That's why he wasn't up there in contention for the regular season championship. Wasn't as consistent as some of the other teams, but now with just five races before the playoffs begin, momentum is definitely on. The 11 team side. Looks like the left rear tire had blown out as he makes his way back up to the flag stand. And he parks it right on the finish line. How about that burnout, Pocono fans, all the way down the front stretch and then parks it on the start finish line. The Pocono fans enjoying win number seven for Denny Hamlin here. It's also win number nine, 199 for Joe Gibbs Racing all time. And you guys talked about all that they had to overcome this weekend the spin and contact with the wall Saturday in practice. Denny Hamlin out of the car. Some booze there for Denny Hamlin. For the spin Saturday, Denny, the lap one contact today, the spin in stage two today, the fuel concerns at the end. How did you overcome all that to get back to victory lane for the seventh time at Pocono? It, it's the team. They just uh, were able to come back with a great strategy there to get us back up front uh, from the mistake I made. <laughs> Taylor in for a hug. Oh, crying tears there. Oh, look at that. Denny, I think the booze might be from the contact with the one. So was that straight payback? I mean, what'd you, what'd you want me to do? <laughs> what'd you expect me to do? Um, you know, it was, uh, we got position on him and uh, he just ran out of racetrack. So let's talk about it. Is it now over between you and Ross Chastain in your book? Uh, I mean, we're, we're gonna just keep racing hard and, until uh, we get the respect uh, back from these guys. And, you know, it's not just that. You, you know, we've been wrecked uh, four times twice while leading in the last 10 months and I just uh, I'm at the end of it. 
Denny, this is win number 49. It ties you with your former teammate, Tony Stewart. You also won behind Junior Johnson right now. Did you ever dream or ever believe, and you actually passed Tony Stewart, did you ever believe you would be at this point? No, I never. I mean, I just wanted to be a local short track racer in Virginia. That's all I really cared about. But uh, I was able to get a, a great break from J.D. Gibbs, and that's why I'm driving the number 11 for Joe Gibbs Racing. And I uh, just got to say thank you so much to Toyota, um, FedEx, Shady Rays, the Jordan brand, Coca-Cola, uh, everyone who makes this possible, Sport Clips. Um, yeah, it just it feels good to win here at Pocono. One more thing. What's your reaction when you hear those boos from the fans in the stands? I hear more cheers than boos. Denny Hamlin making a statement, third win of the year. And Rick, I'll tell you what, championship or not, 49 career wins, those are Hall of Fame numbers, as you mentioned. Definitely Hall of Fame numbers. And again, the only thing lacking right now, Denny has won all the big races. He's won every crown jewel. He just has not been able to capture that first championship. But at 49 wins and as much success as we have seen, Father, this has got to be pretty awesome for, for Denny to share a moment like this with his daughter. Family sport. Look at the style with the flag, man. She's got it figured out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so Taylor's riding along right now. He has another daughter, Molly. Uh, not with him right here, but can you imagine what it would be like? Your hero, your dad, she gets booed on the straight. Uh, I'm sure that's emotional for her. The only one, the only thing that matters right now is he's got to go win another race and give give the other give the other daughter a ride. <laughs> That's right. that, you know, you can't give you can't give one one thing and not the other. That's the way I, I understand it that way at the early stage of fatherhood myself. But I'm going to give Taylor a 10 on car entry. Yeah. yeah. One foot, head first, second. Old school. That was back like uh, like 1988, watching everybody get in their uh, cars in the garage area. That was a throwback to the old school manner to climb him in a race car. And she's all smiles now, as are all of the members of the 11 team, as they'll be celebrating here at Pocono. The spin in turn two. Remember, there was contact with the wall, well, then he raced Ross, he said aggressively, like he had been erased, had been raced, and wanted to make sure that he's going to gain that respect that he feels he deserves. The team will celebrate in victory lane here at Pocono again, seven time winner. Denny Hamlin does it again.